everyone. Thank you for joining Professionals on the Grind, where we share honest self-taught career advice with driven individuals. And today we have Ernesto Romero. And let's start off with you telling us where you're from and what your current position is. Hi, well, I'm Ernesto Romero. Uh, I'm currently an, a, a special education teacher in the LAUSD uh, Unified School District. And I work with students in the early education um, uh, school setting. So I, I, do, I work with the students in the preschool setting. Wonderful. Thank you. And I sort of like to start off with a few background questions just so that we gather your journey together. So um, let's start off with sharing what the highest level of education your parents received. Um, so if you're honestly, aware. <laughs> it, oh, I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> so honestly, the the highest education my parents received were all, was probably up to the first grade. Okay. Uh, in in yeah. their country. So my both of my parents, I'm Salvadorian. So my parents, uh, they're both Salvadorian. Um, and they, they grew up during the wartime, the Civil War in, in El Salvador with, within the night in the 80s. So for them, during that time, talk, and talking to both my, my mom and my dad, they pretty much got like the basics and they just went up to first grade around in what in what is their terms of their of their school setting and for them uh they had to do the reason why was because three, the war was going on that time and also they had to pretty much uh they had younger siblings had to take care of and they had they had to go they had to go work at the fields with their with their parents right and i think it's similar to most mexicans that experience that right like my parents didn't have uh i think my dad didn't finish elementary my mom barely finished she did not finish high school i think she was on that track mm -hmm. do you feel that their life or their lack of education or their journey to get you a better life influenced your professional decision in any way did they push education and professionalism they did they did because growing up for for me like and my siblings you know i i've heard the stories you know my, that my parents right. told me growing up so for them was, you know, uh, for example, I'll give you an example on my, on my dad. Uh, he, there was an incident where my grandfather, he would work uh, these fields and there was an accident at one point that he pretty much fell out. He fell out of this huge truck and broke the side of his hip and he couldn't walk. So, so though, so he couldn't walk for a few, they, they had a cast on him. He couldn't walk. He was pretty much like a baby. So my dad said he was a baby. My grandma had to carry him around to the restroom help him, you know, shower, yeah. everything. So it was up to my dad uh, to pretty much pick up, pick up the weight of that, that he, that my grandfather contributed. And he would have to go and, you know, go with him and work in those fields, you right. know, from sunshine, from sun, sun, sunrise to sun, to sundown. And, you know, he emphasized those stories to us. Hey, you know, so I, you know, I don't have this opportunity that you guys have right now. You know, I wish I did. Uh, so he always made it a focus to pretty much go to school, you know, try to, he never he never pushed me per se or pushed us per se. Hey, I want you guys to be a doctor. I want you guys okay. to be a lawyer. He right. was pretty much, hey, you know, follow what you want to do, what you want to do, but just know that, you know, for you to have an for you to have an education, it's really important. You know, you need to you need to be educated in, in this world. And you know, it's something that, you know, it's gonna help you out. It's gonna be a benefit for you. Not he's like, it's not gonna be a benefit for me anymore, you know, because right. my time is up. It's gonna be a benefit for you and for you know your kids in the future. So they always emphasize us on getting education and same for my mom too. always, you know, how, how are your grades in school? Um, how's it going? You know, what are you doing? And pretty much, yeah, they, they made it a focus for us to like, try to get, try to make it, try to have that education. That's fantastic. And I want you to, I would like you to share a little bit about your educational history and what you ultimately majored in. If you have a story. Yeah, of course. So I could I could honestly start off start from high school. So okay. I uh I I was gonna go to uh, Jefferson High, uh, Jefferson High School. It's a pretty well known uh, high school here in the, in the South Central uh, community. Yes. Um, but I went there for a day. So I went there for a day. <laughs> and, yeah. didn't last. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I did last, but uh, but uh, so I I don't know if you guys heard. There's this uh there's these community of, of charter schools called Green Dot. Yes. So Green Dot was kind of coming around in our neighborhoods. Hey, you know, your son goes, he's going to this middle school and, you know, we're opening up this brand new high school. It's a brand new facility, you know, it's, and we have, you know, they pretty much say, hey, we have, everything's going to be brand new. Everything's great. Smaller classrooms. My parents are like, cool, you know, yes, you know, I want to, I want to send my son there because, you know, during that time when I was going to high school, there was that, uh, there was those, uh, those 
those kind of like gang related fights that were going that was yes, happening. The, in Jeff had a lot of riots back then. Yes. yes. I think they were racial riots as well. Rac they weren't just gang. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it was a lot of racial things going on during that time. Uh so you know, her parent, my mom was like, Yeah, no, I want my I want my son to be saved. Let's let's try this charter school out. So I went to I went to a, a green dot high school, a small charter school around the around the neighborhood. Uh from that I graduated, I graduated from my from that Green Dot High School. Uh now that Green Dot High School does not exist anymore, it got closed down. Yes. Um, how do you how do you feel about that? <laughs> um it you know, now you know it's I'm I'm past it, but you know, during that time when everything was kind of was kind of happening, uh, it was really surreal because right. we we were the first ninth grade class uh, classroom uh, to actually be be part of that that high school, and then on twelfth when we were in twelfth grade, they told, hey, well, just because of funding and because of the enrollment rate that our high school had, we're closing on the school, so we were the only graduating class from from wow. that high school. Does your high school uh, degree even count? I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what, you know, for me, that was like when I was applying to colleges, I was like, oh, my, is it still going to be valid? You know, what's going right. to happen? You know, and they're like, no, no, it's still going to be valid. You know, don't worry. That's still OK. It's just that, you know, going forward, you know, the students were in the 11th, 10th and 9th grade, they were going to be sent out to other charter schools, to other animal charter schools. Right. Um, but, you know, for me, you know, like uh, I know I remember that, uh, you know, my high school, uh, some of the students, like, you know, they staged like a, a walkout and they they actually walked to the Green Dot headquarters and, you know, hey, why are you closing your school down? We had a lot of school pride. Uh, so they went down there, you know, they they try to, like, you know, make their point what was happening. But it was it was already set in stone. Nothing right. could be done. And so so when I when I went to college and I actually went to Cal State Long Beach, um, people would ask me, oh, you know, what high school did you go to? Well, where was your high school, you know, in that freshman year? And I was like, oh, you know, I have this super long story, you know, up in <laughs> I'm like, have you heard of this school? Yeah, it was in the news for a little bit. It closed down. I know yeah. there, there was a little walkout, but, you know, I, I actually went to, I went to Kelsey, I went to Kelsey Long Beach. And when I first went to Kelsey Long Beach, I actually went in as an anthropology major. Okay. I, I was, I'm a, I'm a big uh, history geek. So I love history. I love cultures, learning about people. Uh, so for myself, you know, I was like, you know what? I think I want to do anthropology. I think anthropology sounds cool. You know, it sounds right. Cool. Sounds awesome. You know, I've seen yeah. a lot of documentaries and everything. I could be bones. I, yeah, I, 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 could, I could do that. I could, I could, you know, do, do those things. Right. And, you know, maybe like a year into it, I was like, I kind of like started thinking about it. I was like, well, like, what am, what kind of job am I actually going to get out there with right. an anthropology major? You know, like. In for me, you know, being an, a, a young adult, you know, I, I kind of didn't have that research to, you know, see what was see what was out there for that for that uh, specific degree. Um, so I kind of like was undecided for a little bit. And then I uh, I actually took like this counseling, this actually this counseling course um, kind of to help me decide, oh, hey, like, you know, your personality, the way you learn all these things what this is what kind of it's a bet a best fit for you this is what we think you kind of could lean towards as a career yes and for and then so I, I took that class I had a really awesome professor and um, when I took all those exams or tests you know kind of to to see where I was at it kind of led me to teaching like as a, or like a teacher and I was like huh and I was like yeah but you know and I was like I think I could do that you know I've I've, I've loved working with kids um and even looking back at it, I was, there was always some moments and there was many moments in my life that I could actually relate to actually being in a classroom. Like, like I actually was in like, in high, in a uh, middle school, sorry, in middle school, uh, I went to go help out teachers in elementary school. And during elementary school, I kind of was, uh, when I was a fifth grader, we had this program and uh, we had this little thing going on for fifth graders that you would go kind of like supervise the little kids, like, you know, during right. their recess and kind of like, show them like just supervise them and see how they're doing and stuff um so i i've always had little small things of like being like a teacher or, you know being kind of yeah a teacher's aid teacher's aid something yeah. yeah um so it led me to pursue my uh, degree in uh in education uh in in kelsey long beach um so i i entered to the i entered um uh, i had to apply to the uh the teaching the teaching uh degree traditional well, thing. hold on give me one second before sorry, you jump sorry. into that no it's okay it's great because you're very passionate about it and yeah, that's yeah. fantastic i know i talked um, about it. i'm sorry no you're good um you know, i just 
full disclosure, mm -hmm. unknowingly, Ernesto and I are neighbors, but we didn't find out until we were adults. So I can mm -hmm. sort of share that same sentiment of my mom, who, when I was in elementary, because my sister and my siblings went to Carver and Jefferson. And for anyone that is from South Central from this area, as Ernesto mentioned, they are horrible schools like you will get jumped you will be in fights and you are probably more inclined to join a gang um in going and attending to these schools and so when my mom saw what was going on i also went to a charter school that is still there <laughs> but at the time it was up and coming and i was familiar with green dot because i saw my cousins and friends from the neighborhood sort of tried to get poached by these small charter schools. Mm -hmm. And you saw the huge fight between charter and LAUSD there. But all in all, I did want to sort of ask you while you were in high school, were you a good student? And while you were in college, were you already uh, knowledgeable? Did you ever deal with any issues you had to overcome as a student? Um, so this time could this kind of ties back into like my parents you know like belief of education and you know always striving to to be to be to be the best um you know going to middle i actually did go to Car carver middle school too you know oh. and, uh, <laughs> okay, and yeah you know, so you're aware of yeah. I'm, I'm i'm aware yeah i'm aware you know and you know granted for myself you know i never really had those experiences of you know like kind of like you know those gang related experiences or right. you know those things um but I could tell you that, you know, my parents always emphasize on us having good grades, having coming home with a, A's or B's, you know, a C, no, you were you, right. not, you know, you see you and hey, what's going on? We need to talk. What's what's happening? You know, like, why? Why did you get a C? You know, are you already playing too much video games? You know, so that's my parents kind of thing. You know, are you playing too much video games or watching yeah. too much TV? You know, what's going on? Um, so in high school, I was I, I also uh, made it made it a point for myself to always get strive for good grades. And I did. So I actually um, finished, I believe I finished like with with the with the high school honors. So I finished in the honors within high school. Um, but I always I always try to just, you know, in all my classes, you know, just try to try to get that A or that B. And when I went when I went to uh, college, you know, I kind of try to do the same thing, you know, in college. Right. And, you know, for some of us that actually, you know, go to a public school here in um, in, in uh, like in, in, these, in our communities, you know, right. It's it's a huge it's a huge jump from you know from where what we experience to what the college the college uh, experience is you know yes. and you know and uh, a lot of us don't know you know like when you enter college you know that you have to either you do an exam an English or math exam and you know hey is, do you fall in college level English or do you fall in college level math you know and for myself you know I actually fell I, when I took those exams I was below the college level English. Mm -hmm. um level so I had to take like kind of like a remedial or like yeah. a, a below level English course before I could go into the regular English courses in, in, in college um on the math side uh my school had a they had like a partnership with LA, uh with, with uh, Cal State LA so on Saturdays I would go to Saturdays and uh we would have like a kind of tutoring for mm -hmm. those exams to prepare us for like the college entry level exams right. so I was I was at level in math but you know when it came to the course, we're going to came when it came to like, uh, you know, managing your time, you right. know, it was, it was all brand new for me, you know, like it's, you graduate, you go to, you go to, you go to college and Hey, all right. Uh, here's the syllabus. These things are due at this time and ask me questions if you want to, but here you go. You know, it's, it's <laughs> right, up to you now. Right. Yeah. And, um, I think it's, it's great to hear because I definitely had a different understanding of what occurred or how I criticized my high school, middle school and elementary education, because when I went into college and I went to UCR my first year, I felt so behind because people were reading Moby Dick, how to kill a mockingbird, just the levels of reading and developing and writing that they were, they had accomplished already. I mm -hmm. was like, I, I didn't even. I wasn't forced to read anything when I was in yeah. high school. And so seeing that disparity in education sort of put more passion into wanting to give back to the community. And I mean, I didn't become a teacher, but, you know, I chose political science and saying, but, it, and this is really funny because to me, when I saw the struggles of learning, I didn't know mm -hmm. how to apply myself. I had the same sort of 
epiphany, but I didn't balance that school, social life, party life. And I had to learn it the hard way. I got kicked out of school. Luckily, my mm. mom didn't listen to this, but <laughs> it's like I got kicked out of school. And then I had to go back to the community college system and apply myself and be a self-taught student. And it was a hard learning lesson, but it was something that has now helped me develop into the person that I am now. Like now I can memorize anything. I'm like, man, I should have gone back and gone to med school or something because it is <laughs> learning and all of that. So this sort of segues into the next question, knowing yeah. everything that you know now, um, being in your field, you're an established teacher. Is there anything different you would have done in college knowing what you know now being in the workforce? I mean, you know, be being a teacher, you know, like, uh, and especially like for me, like I, I work with a special, a special education, you know, um, and we could get into that too in a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but you know, college doesn't really like for in per se, like for, for education, um, it doesn't kind of prepare you what to what the real thing is, you know, like you're right. not in the real, you're not like in the classroom, like setting the classroom environment, you know, you read these books, you know, that tell you all oh, these, is, this is a good teaching practice. Oh, you know, this is the way you should be setting this up. But, you know, it changes when you have like 20 plus students in your classroom to one adult, you know, and it's right. you're they tell you, hey, you got to test this. You got to do this. You got to do that. You know, it, it's a whole different ball ballgame. Um, but for myself, you know, uh, seeing where, at, where, where I'm at now. And um, and from where where, where where I was like in college, you know, I wouldn't necessarily change a thing because I felt like, you know, for myself, you know, like it was it was a learning process. It was a learning process for me. Um, you know, I uh, I went to school. So I went to, I went to college for, for my educational uh, uh, from education degree to get a teaching credential also. But I actually um, got to the part one of my preparation program in, in Cal State Long Beach. Okay. Uh, so the first part is pretty much you're taking these like uh, teaching courses, like this ped uh, pedagogy courses uh, for your, uh, for you, for like math, uh, social sciences, every like, you know, yeah. uh, English, all of these. Um, so I did okay in those courses. And then the second part was pretty much uh, in like in, in person student teaching. So like the second part of your semester was you're in a classroom and like uh, in Long Beach Unified. And, the, you know, you're like a, you're pretty much, you know, like under the wing of a teacher. And, you know, they kind of like show you the ropes. Okay. Uh, but to enter to enter that that part of that program, you had to pass pretty much these California state exams. And I honestly did not do well in those exams. So okay. I couldn't enter to that to the next part. So for for me, um, you know, those exams were hard. They were really hard because okay. they, they, taking that coursework, it does prepare you. But once you do those exams, it was it's just a whole different it was a whole different thing. Um, so afterwards, you know, that happened. I took a break, you know, from um, from from being a, from pursuing my 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 career as a teacher. Mm. Um, you know, uh, I actually worked retail for many years. I worked retail since even when I started community college, I was a full time student. And I was also a full time, you know, retail worker. So I had I had that going. I had those both things going on in my life at that time. And, right. you know, when one thing did not work, I was like, hey, you know what? Well, it's OK. You know, I'm fine. I'm, I'm still young. You know, let me take a little break from because I've, I've gone, you know, X amount of years, you know, straight into college. And I was like, let me just go just work, you know, make a little bit more extra right. cash, you know, and just see where that takes me, you know. So hold on, because you sort of skipped over that. So you went to, through the community college system first. And I, how or I went to no, I went. So I went to the Cal State Long Beach. So I was Cal State okay. Long Beach all, all, all the way. I was Cal State Long Beach all the way. And then kind of towards like in my prepar in the preparation program, I pretty much stopped in the second part of it. Okay. Okay. And then also, then I'll, so then, you know, you're, so how are you a teacher? Right. So then, so then you will, we'll, we'll get into that too. Okay. <laughs> okay. That wonderful. So I think um, what I want to ask is in finding your passion to become a teacher, I guess, and to segue back into the question mm -hmm. is, do you, your college or university had a set program to set yourself up for success essentially to become a teacher yes i think what i've noticed within the major itself it is very hard and very competitive how competitive were these programs or did cal state long beach allow you to um enter the program because you were that major like what was that sort of competition like if there was so, competition so there 
in Long Beach, you know, you apply, you apply for this called the, I think it's called the I, 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 so I, I something. So mm -hmm. you apply to the program and, you know, so you go through all the coursework uh, because pretty much you're going in for a multi, multiple subject credential which pretty much is credential from like K through K through uh, 12th grade. Um, right. I'm sorry, K through K through eighth, K through eighth. And then, um, so you're going from, and you're doing like your history, your history uh, classes, you're doing your math, you're doing your English. And pre pretty much you get, it's it's like teaching English, teaching math, you know, these, like you're teaching it. So how are you going to teach it? Um, but, you know, something that once, once you do all those courses, once you do, you complete the, like, you know, the prerequisites, then you actually, you know, okay, hey, you completed these prerequisites. So now you're in the, in the program itself. Um, it's, it, it was in, during the time that I was going to Cal State Long Beach, it wasn't really like that, like impacted right. compared to like how nursing was. Nursing is really impacted in, in Cal State Long mm -hmm. Beach everywhere right um but you know for for myself it it, it was it wasn't um and and I did want to ask because you did touch on something you know you needed that mental break after not being admitted into or not passing that test is this the same teaching credentials or is it a separate se separate test it's a it's a it's a it's like the Calif it's a California uh, state exam so pretty okay. much it's um it's like these it's a California exam um, that, that you have to take, uh, but pretty much, you know, like the course with the, the work that you do in Kelsey Long Beach is supposed to prepare you for these exams. So it kind of gives you like a, from what I recall, because it's been a while, it was like, you know, oh, like there's this, uh, you have X amount of students in this classroom and you notice that this student is struggling with this, you know, what are, what steps will you take to kind of like, you know, help this, uh, you know, support the student in the classroom. And, you know, you kind of have to give your background, you have to give your kind of like your your background knowledge, of, okay, I will do this, I will do that, I will set up my student for success this way. And if you know, if you have to really put it, you have to really put attention, you have to, you know, be paying attention to actually like, and remember a lot of things, okay, I need, right. I, I could do this, I could do that. Um, but, you know, I think for me during that time, I was just kind of like, I was just, I was a full time student, mm -hmm. I was also working full time 40 hours, right? you know, and I think for me, I was just everything was just all over the place. And how did you trust yourself to know that you were going to take this break from accomplishing your career goals to make money? Or was it just like, I need a break, I'll figure it out. What was that thought process? It was, you know, it was honestly kind of like a, it was a reality check. Okay. You know, I was like, it was like, oh, this ain't easy, you know? So it was, it was like, a, it was a gut punch to me, you yeah. know? It was like, hey, like, you just can't be, you know sorry, half-assing it, you know, like yeah, that, of course. Mm -hmm. you know, you have to, you have to like, you know, be, be on it, you know, and not, honestly, I, I felt at that time I really wasn't on it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was reality check for myself that I was like, damn, you know, like, okay, I, I just need to, I didn't do as great as I thought I was doing. And, you know, it was, it was your a reality check for me. And, um, but I always told myself, you know, I've always kind of like wherever I worked, you know, people would ask me, oh, so, you know, like, do you really want to do this forever? You know, Ernesto, like, what's going on? You know, you know <laughs> I want to be a teacher. And, you know, yeah. like, like, you know, there is a lot of there is a lot of power of, you know, speaking things into existence, you know. So it's like I've always like I've always kept those words, you know, like when people would ask me, oh, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to be a teacher. Right. Like, really? You want to be a teacher? Like, yeah, I want to be a teacher. You know, people like, oh, you know, they don't make money. <laughs> I'm like, well, right. um, I'm not in it for the money. <laughs> right, right. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're in it for the impact. It's valuable information, right? And yeah, yeah. So I do, could you please break down your journey from, you know, the sub to teacher transition and what steps occurred, what happened for you, for that transition for you? Yeah, of course. So um, pretty much for myself, you know, I was still, and I'll take a, I'll take a little step, a uh, little step back. Um, you know, I was still working at, I was still working at, uh, at retail, at retail and Apple at, at, for Apple, uh, shout out to Apple. I had a great time working there. <laughs> um, you know, and so I was working at Apple, but I was still trying to navigate at this point in my life. Like, okay, what are, what am I going to do next? You know, what are my next steps in my, in my career? And that's when my fiance told me, Hey, you need to find a use up, you know, you have a degree, you could sub with your degree. Like, oh yeah, you know, you're right. I, I could do that. So I applied, I applied to, so I, I applied a sub in, uh, LAUSD and, and Long Beach Unified. Um, I got, I got, I got in for both of them, but Long Beach Unified, I was like, you know what, if I'm going to eventually leave, uh, leave, uh, leave, leave, uh, Apple, the retail job, I need to make sure I have a new steady income, you know, going forward. Right. And, you know, and sometimes you might not get a, a subbing gig, you know, uh, one day or one week, you know, so I, I was, like, you know what, might as well have two. 
So if I can't, if I don't have maybe that one day at LEZ, I can have an, another day at Long Beach, you know, so I, I could have just to keep, just to play money. safe, you know, yeah, money. Yeah, of course. You, know, you, have to, you have to pay the bills, right? Yeah. So I, I, so I had a, I had that in mind. Um, but it, so I started subbing LUSD, uh, and eventually after, after subbing with him for a while, uh, I get an email, they send me an email. Hey, you know, we have this awesome program, this, uh, internship program that, you know, will help you get your credential. So you could be, become a credential teacher, you know, and I was in the process of, say, of, of, of subbing going, you know what, I'm probably going to go back to Cal State Long Beach and, you know, finish that second part of my, uh, for my, my, uh, credentialing program there. And, you know, and go from there, you know, but I was like, man, but how do I have to take a loans? You know, how am I going right. to pay for my expenses? You know, what's going to happen? And because, you know, when the difference was the, and one thing about when you're, you're going through those preparation, pre preparation programs in college is that you don't get paid for that when you're, when you're going to teach. So, you know, you're actually, you're going, you're going that second semester. And in my experience in, in Long Beach, you know, you are teaching, you're, you're teaching from 7.30 to 7.30 to 3, 3 o'clock. And then you're going, you know, to your college courses at night. And, you know, but you don't get paid for that. You're doing all the work but with zero pay. Right. And that was something that I had, I, I kept mindful of at LUSD was, hey, you know what, you're, we're gonna, you're gonna not only, you know, have a position with us, but we're also gonna get, you know, you're also gonna get paid. And we're also gonna help you get your credential. And uh, so I was, I saw that email. I was like, you know, uh, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna see, figure it out still. I kind of, I just kind of put it, put it to the back. And eventually I just talked to my fiance about it and like, Hey, like there's this thing, you know, she was like, dude, check it out, you know, check it out, see what's going on. And I looked into it, you know, and it was, I read into it. Okay. This is awesome. You know, but the only way you could, you, you could go into this credentialing program is you have to have position available. So right. You, you could get in. So I applied, I got in and everything, but now was the next step was actually finding an open position, you know, at, at a school that was able to take me. And, and, you know, for, for myself, I was, I was in a long-term position as a sub for that, for the specific classroom. <clears throat> and eventually when I had to leave, you know, uh, there was, uh, there was this vacancy at a, at a school and my, my, my teacher friend told me, Hey, you know, there's this vacancy here at the school and uh, around the neighborhood, you know, go submit your, your resume and, you know, apply, you know, and see how it goes. And I went, dropped my resume, interviewed with the, with the principal and the vice principal, assistant principal. And, you know, and, and I told them, Hey, so they asked me, so what's, what's going on? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I've been subbing with the district. I've been this, this opening you guys have for it. Like I've, I've actually been doing this position for, you know, for a couple of, uh, for, for a while already. So I'm, I'm pretty right. like, I, I know about the program. I know what, I know what it entails of, I know what I need to do. And there, and I also, I'm, I'm also, I also just recently got accepted into the internship program for LAUSD. And they were like, oh, that's awesome. Cool. You know, you know, like, that's great. But we'll, yeah. we'll keep, you know, maybe there was already like a credential teacher they already had in mind or, you know, other candidates they had in mind. But, you know, it, one thing led to another, you know, they, I guess they, they liked how, you know, I presented myself and I got hired. So I entered I was, I was like, great. I, not only did I get into the, the, the credentialing program, but now have a position. So I'm, I'm securing, I'm secured to enter the, the credentialing program. And once the credentialing program for LASD, it's a two-year program. It's a two-year internship program where pretty much you're, you're going through like regular kind of like coursework as you would go into college and you're taking units every, every few months um, and every, every, every week. And then you're going to entertain all these classes. And you're earning your you're in your credential. And you're getting uh, so, paid. And you're getting paid as well. Okay. Um, but like uh when you're in the when you're in the credentialing program, uh, because you're not a credential teacher, you're you're in a you're in a separate uh, uh salary uh, table because you're you're in a you're a, you're not you're not fully credentialed. So you're you need a <clears throat> you're you're not credentialed yet. Right. So but you know they make it they make it real clear for you. But the great thing about the the internship program with LAUSD is that you're earning those salary points that's going to elevate your salary once you be once you uh once you get your credential. So it kind of it kind of helps out, you know, you get you're getting paid a little less when you first start, but once you're you're credentialing, your credential, you're now you're now what we call it in the induct induction program. Mm -hmm. you, your salary increases and then you move up the salary table. So so now, you know, at, now I'm, I'm in a better position now where being with LAUZ going through their program right. and where I'm, where I'm at now. And then do you feel like that also leveraged your network within LAUSD and also the teachers that you were interacting with in this mm -hmm. program? 
Oh yeah, yes, because I'm I'm a part. So it's like a it's like kind of like when you go to your masters. You're part yeah. of cohort. So okay. you know you, you're you're with the same cohort for the whole like two year program. So you know you make friends with your with your your colleagues and everything. Right. And, you know the great thing about that is that the the teachers that are teaching these courses, they're per they're they're teachers also in the classroom or they're and they or they've been doing this for like a more years than, than you have. So they they have more knowledge <laughs> and they, right. they 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 share the knowledge with you. And the great thing about it was that you know some qu questions that I've had, you know, going you know. Being being a first time teacher going through going through my process, if I didn't know something, I was like, oh, you know what? I don't know this is burning is it's a question that's burning in my head, but I know that I could ask this question later on at night and you know when I'm 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 in class, and I would ask my professor, hey professor, you know like, I'm this is a situation going on in my classroom, you know with the student, how could I best support the student, you know what what kind of what techniques or what what can how can you help me. And, you know, and they will, then they will kind of pick my brain. Oh, so what are you, what are you doing? You know, what, is, what is it, right. do you have? Like, oh, I, this is what I, this is what I've been doing, blah, blah, blah. Have you tried this? And I'm like, oh my God, I have not tried it. You're right. <laughs> and like, you know, so it's, it's really great, you know, yeah. being able to, being able to talk to, to them and sharing that knowledge with also my, my, my colleagues in the program, because, you know, we all learn at the same time. Right. And, you know, I think you kind of gave us a little bit, uh, of a sneak peek of something that I think is critical or crucial to someone listening to hear mm -hmm. you have a teacher pitch, right? That presentation that you had of yourself, how do you prep for those kind of conversations? I mean, and I'm sure it's like any prep work, right? It's like you do your research, you yeah. try to sell yourself. What did you do to prepare yourself for that conversation? Because this is like your elevator pitch to this position, right? Yeah. So are you talking about the pitch to like, uh, for when I, I interviewed for the job or yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Initially when you, you had mentioned it briefly. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, honestly for, for myself, you know, I've like, I've, I was, I was relatively new, but you know, like I working, working at in my specific classrooms, uh, my classroom setting. Um, I kind of knew a little bit more um, of, of the program that I was going to be teaching. And, you know, I think I just went in with a confidence of like, you know, like that I showed my, I showed my, you know, my, my, my bosses all, Hey, like, you know, I know that, Right. you know these students they they need stability they need this 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 and you know and i'm gonna be able to provide this for them and you know for for for, for their for their for their personal growth you know for their to help them out and you know i think for me it was just having that confidence of you know knowing that i i, I know what i'm gonna i need to do right. you know and just <clears throat> having that having having that confidence i think helped me get secure my position even though you know i might i might not know all the full the answers the full answers yet but i knew where to ask those questions you know in case mm. you know something up a a, a a problem arises or uh, something arise in my classroom right. setting and you know i i made really good connections with teach with the teachers i was caring for you know and that i know that i could i could just quickly text them hey you know miss so-and-so miss you know um how do i how am i able to you know best support my student that you know that has a speech, uh, a speech impairment, you know, how can I best mm -hmm. support it in the classroom, you know, and they're, they'll be able to give me some pointers. Okay. Do this or add this to your classroom or, or, you know, try this. Right. And, you know, I do sort of like, um, uh, want to touch on, you know, this platform, right. That I'm, I'm creating for people mm -hmm. in your line of service or your, you know, field of expertise, how would you best benefit someone or help someone, you know, as they're going through the motions? Because you are a teacher who, you know, had to do with COVID. You had to do with getting that first job, landing that first teaching opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, potential teachers, you know, I think I've, I've known a few people who never made it to become a teacher. They had the sub route and it was just a, it didn't happen for them. Like, what is your recommendation or your take on that? You know, like I, for me, it's like teaching, being a teacher is honestly not for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not only, it's not only like people say, oh, you have a lot of patience, you know, you're really patient with them, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of that, but I think more a compassion, right. you know, I think it's just having the compassion to, you know, be able to support those students to be able to, you know, be that support for them and help them, you know, because it is, <clears throat> it is a really like, uh, demanding job right and you know like if you're thinking about becoming an educator you know like and you're not sure about it you know become a sub you know be a substitute teacher you know and 
you know, sub, you know, luckily, you know, when you're a sub, you could, you know, you could say that morning, if, they, if you don't like fifth grade and you had to call over the, hey, we have a vacancy to, for you could, to come in for a fifth grade classroom. You don't want to go. You could don't just say it. no, oh, you know, God. don't do it. You know, <laughs> just wait, wait for the next call for me, yeah. like the first grade or second grade, you know, just it's, you have, you have that power, you know, Yeah. because I, because I'll tell you, I'll talk about fifth grade because I, I went to a fifth grade classroom once and I was like, I cannot. You're scarred. You're scarred. I'm scarred. <laughs> And they they scarred me and I was like, no, thank you. I can I'm like, go to fifth grade, God bless your soul. You know, yeah. like, that is a that is a tough group of kids, you know. Right. And um, but you know, just if you're thinking about it, you know, just take the sub route and you know, and you'll get and you will get a feel for it, you know, you'll get a feel that this is something that you want to do. And you know, the district will, you know, what whichever district that you might go to, just double check if they have some sort of like internship program, you know, that you know, they will help you support to get you to that route to become a teacher, you know, and, right. and you know, be, because right now, even right now, there, there are a lot of vacancies, you know, in, in the educational field, even in LUC, there's, there's about, I believe, almost 3000 vacancies. And, you know, that it's a lot. I think even in spreading awareness about this internship opportunity, and of course, I'm not in the field, I'm not going to be aware, but yeah. maybe someone becoming a teacher isn't, isn't aware that there's this yeah. type of opportunity. And also, I think, finances are such a huge proponent as to why someone does something or doesn't. So knowing that there's a program out there that is willing to pay you, you know, look for resources at times. Yes. Resources fall on our laps or opportunities mm -hmm. fall on our laps. But if this is your passion, this is the field that you want to get into. Talk to every single teacher, you know, go back to your old elementary school or talk to contact someone at LAUSD. The way I like to research things is I'm not only looking at the company's name, I'm looking at what the company uh, the parameters around the company and seeing yeah. what can be used. And as someone that is in your current position, do you look at resources now that LAUSD provides or just teacher resources? Are you taking advantage of teacher, teacher discounts? Is that a thing? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I do. Honestly, I do. I, because you know, you, you, um, this is, you know, there, there is, there is that like, you know, saying, you know, uh, there is a difference between a teacher funded classroom and the, and the, and like a government funded classroom, mm -hmm. you know, you see the difference, yeah. you know, you see the color, you see, you see all of it. And, you know, as a, as a teacher, you know, your, 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 your money is your, even, you know, your finances are, you know, there's only so much that you could spend, you know, you want to give right. these kids a world, you want to, you know, do everything, but you also have to pay the bills. You have to also, right. you know, provide for your own family, you know, so there is, there is a lot, you know, that you have to think about. And, you know, there are a lot of resources out there, you know, that, for teachers they to, they to take advantage of. Uh, there is, you know, I, I use this awesome website called uh, Donors Donors Cho Donors Choice or Donors Choose. And, um, you know, you pretty much, you know, you go, hey, um, I am so-so, you know, I teach fifth grade, I teach fourth grade, and, you know, I'm trying to get these supplies for my students, you know, and you pretty much just make like a wish list for like what you need for your classroom. You make a wish list and, you know, people will donate and, you know, people will donate and they'll fund, they'll fund your project and you'll get, and you'll, it might take a little bit, it might take a while, but you'll get those items you necessarily, you need for your classroom. And a lot of people don't know this, that, you know, going into it, you know, and they spend, you know, some of their money buying these things, you right. know, and I, you know, I, 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 I too was guilty of it. You know, when I first started, like I bought, I bought a handful of things to, you know, improve my classroom, you know, and. You know, I did, and it it, it it is expensive. You know, these things, you right. know, that you buy at Lakeshore are expensive. You know, it's it, you want to buy everything because you see everything is so nice and brand new, but it it does cost a lot of money. But you know, you you do this project, you know, you and you say, hey, I need brand new shelves. I need brand new. And in my in my in my own uh, in my own setting, I need these brand new like mat toys materials for my students because of their age level, you know, right. and, and, you know, you have these big corporations, like for, for example, Chevron, or like, you know, these other ones, they'll like, they'll, they'll fund it, you know, they'll fund you, hey, you know, Mr. Romero, here's $50 for your, for your project, here's $100, you know what, like, they'll, they'll be like special weeks, hey, uh, so and so's are doubling funds. So like, if you, if they donate $100, now their donations $200, because they'll match it, they'll double the donation. That's fantastic. And mm -hmm. I'll make sure to get all of Ernesto's wish list links and make sure I have that available for everyone mm -hmm. <laughs> because I think it is important. Um, and again, it kind of goes into what teachers are sort of forced to do because they have that willingness and passion. And you're not just going to let a kid not have, you know, a pencil or a paper, or the necessities and materials that they need. Mm -hmm. And to sort of, you know, 
And I'm sorry if you're probably getting all these exact same questions, but I think of Abba Elementary. I just finished watching uh, that. And it's sort of uh, how true to, you know, obviously it's a sitcom, but are you watching it? Is it something that you relate to as a teacher? I, I, I love that show. That, that okay, show, like if, so like, cause some of the, it's, it's so well written that, you know, some right. of the little things that are in the, that, that happen in, in the, in the show are an experience that I experienced in my, my own self or that I've seen in my own, in my, in my own classroom, in my own school setting, you know? Right. And it's like, I love that show because yeah. they, they, they get it. Some things that get down and, you know, it's, and it's true. You see like these public schools, you see these teachers that are there for the students, you know, and they're, you know, they have a compassion to be there for the students. Right. And, you know, there's also like, there's hard times, but there's also a lot of bright times, you know, and that show, I love that show. That show is like <laughs> one of my top shows right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to bring it up. I was like, yeah. well, let me ask you about Alabama Elementary, <laughs> because even as someone who isn't an educator, it's like yeah. seeing those uh, workplace, you know, it is very well written. It's really funny. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, it's the reality of the education system. Yeah. And, you know, you bring it up your wish list. I'm like, you know what? That is a real thing. Like pe teachers need supplies and what yeah. better way to like resource it. And it's funny because as social media is a negative, one positive thing about TikTok is people will donate to a cause. And I know they had an episode on that, but it's also in like what I'm seeing here. And I think mm -hmm. through um, awareness, it's very important and having these conversations and so uh, thank you i i appreciate all of your honesty and transparency and you know everyone make sure you donate to Ernesto's <laughs> donations. <laughs> no i love that yeah. and i want you to sort of um you shared a little bit about how you kind of grew that love and being sort of like a student ta to all of your teachers but yeah what solidified i'm going to be a teacher was there an aha moment for you i know for for educators, you know, for, for, for my colleagues, I talk to, you know, there's always that one teacher, or there's always those teachers, you know, that if you've gone through, you know, your, your education journey that, you know, they, they make that impact for, you, you know, like, oh my right. God, you know, because of Ms. So-and-so, because of Mr. So-and-so, you know, I want to be an educator. I don't want to be a teacher or, you know, or you do have those aspects of, you know, like of those teachers that weren't really that great. Oh, you know, I didn't like Ms. So-and-so I didn't, you know, but you know what? I'm gonna be a better teacher than her. I'm gonna be a better teacher than him, you know? So you, there are there are those moments that, you know, that you realize that, you know, they kind of give you, they kind of impact you in a, in a different way, you know? Like I, you know, I went to, and, you know, I went to Carver and I, I had super awesome, you know, teachers, you know, uh, from uh, that I that I remember, you know, my, my, my history teachers were amazing. And, you know, the way they taught their, the way they've taught their, you know, their, their, their knowledge or their courses, their class, their class to us, to me specifically, you know, it impacted me, you know, and I was like, this is an art. Like, it's right. like, you know, just the way, just the way they, it wasn't just, here's a textbook. Cause I had those teachers too, that was like, here, here's a textbook. Um, and go to chapter 15 and you see all the, at the end of the chapter, you see all those 20 questions, answer them. Right. And, you know, find the, find the answers in the, find the answers in the, in the chapter. And, yeah. Do you do the work? I'm going to sit here, finish. Okay, you can leave five minutes early. And I've had those teachers that I read in it there, you know, like in, inspired me. Like, I love going to their classroom. I, I enjoyed yeah. it. I was like, I look forward I look forward to it, you know? And, you know, those are the teachers that showed you those that passion, you know, that they were there not only for, you know, for themselves, but they were there for the students. You know, they were there for to kind of like, you know, hey, like, this is, this is fun. Let me make these subjects fun for you because they are, you know, right. they're interesting. No, um, I can definitely relate to that. Um, that's amazing. And so, did you have a teacher? Do you want to shout out the teacher? <laughs> specifically? I've had. I <laughs> too honestly many, had. Too many. <laughs> I had too many. You know, I had too many. You know, like uh, like I've I've had a I've had a lot of teachers that were were an inspiration to me. You know, and uh, you know, like I've there's too many to to name. Uh, but you right. know, a lot of them were my a lot of them were my high school teachers. You know, at at the charter school, uh, a lot of them were also my teachers in you know in um. In, in my middle school. Uh, but, you know, I, I recognized their passion for it. I recognized they were, they were there for not only for me, but from, you know, my fellow, the fellow students in my classroom, you know, and right. that, that really like, uh, it, it does leave like an uh, impact in you, you know, and you want to give that forward to, you know, future, you know, future kids that are, they, you know, that are going through the, you know, these growing pains are going through the, ed the educational system as well. Right. Right. And yeah. to sort of um, revert back 
when you're out in the field already, you're making money because you did have a life in retail, right? And mm -hmm. I think sometimes when people are in college, it's hard to jump into a career because, um, you know, hiring managers are looking at your history and they're like, you have no credentials with, with students. Like, well, what are you even thinking yeah. in trying to like apply for this teaching position? Did you have any hurdles once you um, started applying for jobs? Um, no, I didn't, you know, and it, oh, I'll, awesome. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I'll yes. tell you why, because, you know, even though like, even though like LA, LAUSD itself, it's a huge district. It's, it's, it's actually pretty small if you like, you know, once you, once you're in it, you know, okay. word of mouth gets, you know, gets around, you know, so they, you know, people, people kind of do talk about you, about you, you know, and for myself, you know, uh, I just didn't jump to like, I didn't just, you know, take a break and then bam, hey, there's this, there's this teacher put, uh, there was a, there was an ad on the, on the dot com website and hey, <laughs> apply, I'm, I'm sold, you know, no, so you know, uh, I actually, uh, before I started, you know, got into my position, I started, I went in as a, I, I was, you know what, what I was, I asked myself, what am I doing? Am I going to be right. working a, re a retail job? You know, am I going to be doing this for forever? You know, and I, for myself personally, you know, like I've, I had, I had an amazing experience, you know, job experience working in retail. I loved it. But, you know, for me, like it just didn't fulfill me anymore. Um, so I was like, I was, you know what, Ernesto, you told yourself you were going to be a teacher, you know, be about it you know let's do right. it what's what, what's going what's going to happen you know what's going to what's going on and you know i and i honestly have to take thank also my fiance for she pushed me you know she was like hey like dude what's up what's going on you know like yeah you know you have your degree you know let's 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 put it to work you know like you know what you're right you know you like she was like why don't you why don't you do subbing and you know like you're right i should do something you know try it out you know but I, for me i was like ah oh, i don't know i remember how it was to be I mean, I remember how it was when a substitute teacher came to the classroom, you know, so it, it's tough, you roll know, so <laughs> roll, out, roll out the TV or like, you know, like, so the kids are bad, yeah. the kids are bad, you know, so I was like, you know what, it's, I'm going to learn one, one way or another. Right. Um, so I, 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 I actually applied for the district and became a substitute teacher for about a year and a half, I believe. And uh -huh. No. Um, what was that process like? So would you say a good stepping stone to becoming a teacher is the substitute teacher route because a lot of people struggle becoming teachers it's interesting most most definitely you know like it's it's one thing going through your coursework and you know in, in, in college and you know you're you're learning about it through a book right. it's another thing being in the classroom you know and even you, you know when you're when you become a te when you're becoming a te when you're applying to become a teacher you know or you're or just if you if you're you're thinking hey you know what i'm gonna be a kinder teacher i'm gonna that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> the, but, easiest you know, the, the easiest the easiest the easy you will think it's the easiest but it's not really the easiest okay, okay? okay um but you know you go thinking i'm gonna be a first grade second grade etc teacher that's my grade level i'm gonna stick to it i'm gonna stick to my guns that's it but hey if they're hiring for fifth grade and that's you all they all it. have they only yeah. have fifth grade you take it you know and it's just it's a whole different learning curve so for me, you know, like becoming a substitute teacher, like it actually helped me kind of like pinpoint, oh, I like this grade. I don't, don't I really don't like this grade. This is, you know, it kind of helped me kind of maneuver to what I, I was I was leaning towards. So um, I would definitely recommend for somebody if you're thinking about teaching, you know, start out, start as a sub. And, you know, if you could if you if you class as a substitute teacher, you know, you could you could do it. <laughs> You could do it. <laughs> that's fantastic advice. And I think that sort of go, that's something someone once advised me because I was unhappy with the position and they were like, well, now you know what you're never going to do. And it's applicable within that same field because you do have to think about the level of, uh, that you want to teach the age that you're going to be interacting with and the different mm -hmm. issues that come <laughs> with all yeah. of the different, you know, ages and the age range. So that's fantastic advice. Um, do you do you think that the industry has changed since you started? Has it evolved at all? I mean, outside of I, COVID, I, outside of COVID, I think right now, honestly, like education is going through like this whole it's going through it's it's going through a change. Mm -hmm. You know, the old the old guard is out and the new guard is coming in, but the old guard still doesn't want to let go. Okay. You know, a lot of a lot of the educators, they're still like teaching you know there are there are the older generation you know kind of right. they're, they're you know they're they're older and then you know for myself I'm, I'm i'm relatively young um so it's like it's a whole new way of teaching a whole new practice that i've i'm learned that i've learned in co in college you know that that i've recently learned within the last maybe five to ten years 
but they've been doing this for about 20 plus years, you know, so they're, they've been stuck to those, they've been doing those, their things for, for, for who knows how long, you know, and it's just a whole new way, of, uh, a, whole, a whole new way of thinking coming into, into education. Right. And you don't think, because uh, I think the generational disconnect is, tra- is transcended through all careers, right? So yeah. is it that LAUSD is not demanding them to keep up with the times or once you're tenure, you're allowed to do what you want? Like, what does that look like? I think, you know, like, I think what it is not, it's not the LAUSD doesn't want you, is they're not pushing it. But, you know, I think as maybe as, you know, as an educator that you've been doing it we're doing it for so long if, you know if it ain't broke you know why fix it right you know that saying you know like they're like i've been doing this for x amount of years you know it's and it's worked x amount of years you know like so they're like i could still do the same thing uh but you know i think as as an educator you know you always have to be open to uh brand new ideas brand new like uh you know knowledge that is out there brand new like uh, information you know because there's different there's new changes there's there's huge technological changes now going on into in, in education you know that wasn't there 20 years ago, wasn't even there when I was going to, you know, to elementary school, you know, barely, you know, I remember, I remember that, you know, when I was going to elementary, you know, we're getting the first like uh, Apple computers out, you know, those huge things, you know, and then now, you know, in every school, there are iPads there, you know, and you and teachers are, you know, they are recommended to use iPads to, you know, teach the brand new things, because a lot of the students that are now going through the educational system, you know, that that's what they know, they know technology, and they know iPads, they know computers, they know all of that. That's fascinating. And now because COVID was a huge component these last few years, what was your learning curve as a teacher going through that virtual change with the students? Um, so this this is so so going back, so going back to like our uh, so I I was a substitute teacher, right? I was I, mm-hmm. I was subbing for I was subbing for a good amount of time. And this position opened up in my in my current school and I, you know, I interviewed, um, I, I thought it, I thought it went great. You know, they're like, we'll call you. They called me the week prior to, to, to lockdown, to, to wow. schools going down. So I got high. They were like, Hey, we got you. You know, we need to, you're, we, the process is still going to take a while. So, you know, can you come in as a sub for your classroom? Yeah, for, of course, you know, it's my classroom, you know, I'm going to start knowing my students in the X, Y, and Z. And I get, I get in, I get in day one that Monday was it like March I think We closed down like March 13th or March 14th or something. So I come in that March like eighth and, you know, I'm like, all right, I, I need to change this. I need to do this. I need to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of had already like a mental picture of what I need to change in my classroom, set up my classroom Thursday. They make the announcement. Hey, Ellie, we're, we're shutting down. We're, you know, Close, we're closing just shop. Just when you landed the job. Just, just when I landed the job, you know, <laughs> just when I landed, it, we're closing down, you know. So yeah. So it was a, it was just a, you know, we're going, and then it was that, that was it, you know. It was like, okay, what's, it was, you know, at those, uh, those at those first, you know, weeks and first months, it was there was that fear going on, not only in you know here, but in around the world, right? Right. So nobody really knew what to do, you know. And eventually, like you know, the district itself, hey, we're doing online teaching. How is how is that going to look these first few months? You know, we're going to just do our best and, you know, try to like reach as many students as we can. You know, for me, you know, growing up with the, the technology, you know, I found it really easy to set up things, you know, communicate with everything X, Y, Z um, and, um, you know, setting up, setting up my, my virtual classroom. And, right. um, you know, but for for some other like for the for the educators that, you know, they're that aren't really uh, t- technology technological proficient you know it was really difficult for them right right yeah. and it, you're you're good i think i think you froze a little bit well while we're having technical difficulties here <laughs> for a quick moment um uh it's it's to me i think it's an interesting field because teaching is something it's its own lane career wise, right? So it's kind of hard to gauge once you're in it. And you froze for a little bit, but yeah, yeah, I was gonna oh yeah, I was gonna sorry. I was gonna also I was like, I need text her like that. I I, we both froze. Sorry. Okay, no, we're we're good to go. We're good good to go. I was just saying um being a teacher, I think following that career path, it's its own lane, uncomparable to any other 
line or industry that you could work for. Right. And so mm -hmm. I hear you going through this, through the motions and everything. And I do, I will segue back to COVID because I think it was a huge impact on teachers. Did you find that there were any skills that you came beforehand that you already had in place that were really critical or crucial to you being a great teacher, a great sub or skills that you felt you had to develop once you like got the job and you said, Oh, I'm not as good as I thought. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think, I think when the whole COVID thing hit, you know, it's everybody was a new teacher, right. You know, and it kind of helped me out because I was still, I was a new teacher, you know? So <laughs> I was like, I'm learning, you know, we're yeah. all learning the same thing at the same time. You get a COVID pass. I love we, the COVID yeah, pass. We, yeah, we, you get the COVID pass, you know, but you could, you know, be only, we call it, it was only for that first year, you know? Right. Um, but you know, I've learned, you know, what I luckily like my department, they, they, they helped us, you know, they helped our, uh, the teachers in my, in my, in my, in my field, you know, like helping up with like helping us with lesson plans, helping us kind of like navigate how to work with our students, because, you know, I work with the students that are, you know, they're, they're in preschool. They're from, yeah. they range from three, three to five. And these students are, they're, uh, they're students with, uh, with disabilities. So, you know, it, it's, how can we, how can we work with them? How can we, how can we work with them? Not, in, not in a classroom environment from, from right. home from like a monitor, you know, from a, just from a little camera, you know? And uh, so it was, not only was I trying to teach the students, but I was also to help teaching the parents at the same time, you know, work, we were working together, you know? And, you know, shout out to all parents, you know, that they had a child, you know, going to school during that time and, you know, they're handling their own uh, personal lives and their own work life on top of, you know, also helping the students out uh, with the whole the internet and the school thing, right? You know, because it was tough, you know. And I did see it. I did see it with my when the, with the parents of my students. You know that, you know, sometimes they they would run late a little bit on Zoom, and I was, hey, you know, it's okay, don't worry about it, you know. Or they couldn't show up because another personal matter is going on. Um, but you know, kind of going back to you know, I I learned for myself that you know, I had a I had to become a real real good communicator with 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 the with the parents of from from my from with the parents. Right. You know, and just having that understanding, you know, we're all going through the same thing and, you know, we're going to take this one day at a time. And, you know, it just like just as you're learning about with with me, I'm learning with you at the same time. You know, we're all right. going through this together. So I think, you know, a lot of the parents had a lot of compassion, uh, you know, not only for me, but for all, all the other teachers I talked to, you know, uh, during during the pandemic, during the pandemic. Um, but, you know, I, I just had to pick up things real fast, you know, and try to like. How can I reach these students? What, what, what can I do to kind of like provide the best best support for them, um, you know, through through distance learning? Right. And as you're in the field, um, what mistakes would you say you learned early on that you overcame and were the biggest lessons for you as um, aside from just you being a teacher and uh, developing curriculum? But I guess mistakes that you're making new on the job as you're looking at it through the lens of an employee. You know, I, I see it at right now, the way I see it for myself, you know, I, uh, even reflecting back on it, you know, as, as, as a teacher, as an educator, we do a lot of, we do a lot of reflection, you know, not only like on how the day went, but you know, how the whole, how the whole, your whole school year is going or how like right. the growth of the students, it's going in your classroom, how it's going. Um, so, you know, looking back on where I, when I, when I first started to where I am now, I have seen a lot of progress in myself as an educator. You know, there are there are a lot of things that I was doing beforehand. I was like, oh, hey, why am I what was I doing that? You know why I shouldn't be doing that? That's that's not that for that's that's kind of kind of intuitive, you know, to to learning. Right. And, you know, there were small things that I had to kind of like little little mistakes that I was making that I had to kind of like fix for myself. Um, and, you know, like uh, so so there was there was a lot of things that I learned. And, you know, that I'm and I'm still learning, you know, I'm not going to say right now that like, I'm the best teacher out there in the world. You know, I'm the best, you know, no, I'm I, I honestly am not. But I I go every day with the intention of I'm going to do my best. And, you right. know, and that's what and that's what I always try to do every single day when I wake up and I, I go to my classroom. How can I be better than the day before? How can I improve? And just reflecting back on it, like, oh, you know, like this wasn't working or let's try this now and just try trying different approaches. I think that's amazing. I think self-assessment is something that people aren't in tune with or aware mm -hmm. that they have to continuously do regardless of what field they're in. Um, and, you know, you shared that you're a special needs teacher and this kind of goes in hand with the question I'm about to ask you, but what was the best 
job decision you ever made? And was it deciding to become a special needs teacher? Because that's a huge weight to take on in the best way, because you these are the kids that need the most help. But also, mm -hmm. um, I would imagine it almost aligns similar to social work, right? Because the kids are a little bit harder to deal with, but please inform us. I um yes, it was it was it was a difficult decision that I made, but you know, I just came one day and you know, and I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it too because I told my fiance one day, I was like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a special education teacher. And she was like, What? Like, like <laughs> why? Um, yeah, why? When did you decide this? I'm like, I decided this, you know, I it's been in my mind, and you know, like I want to do this. I don't know why. It's just it's calling it's it's calling me for whatever reason, but I just feel like it's a calling. And going back to back going back to my uh my subbing uh my little subbing stint with the district yeah. so i started i started subbing different classrooms so i would sub like first grade i would sub like second fifth and then eventually one of the uh, school called me up and they were like hey like we have uh we have this uh this we have this uh we need a substitute teacher for this preschool this preschool classroom uh for students with uh, special needs and I was like, um, okay, yeah, you know, like I, you know, I, I need, I need, I need a job. I need a, right. I need a day, a pay, you know, I need, I need to go, you know, so of course <laughs> yeah. I'll do it, you know? So, you know, I went into, I went to, I went to school and, you know, I never, I have, I never worked with a special education students mm -hmm. and even, and even going to college, you know, I never, I never even want, I never even thought about working with special education students as well. I was always like, you know, I'm gonna be a K through eight teacher, you know, and let's see how it goes from there. Um, but you know, I walked into this classroom, you know, and I just, you know, I spent the day with these kids, you know, and I, I honestly, I, I fell, I fell in love with it. Like I was like, wow, this is all, this is, this is amazing. Yeah. Like, I didn't know that this sort of classroom was existed with the, with the district, you know? So I was, I was, I was taken, uh, I was taken away with it, you know, taken away with it. And, you know, like eventually, you know, the, the teachers, you know, it's rare, it's, you know, it's tough right now finding substitute teachers. It's right. tough finding them. It's tough. It's tough. It's even tougher finding a male uh, substitute teacher out there, you know? And, you know, they would say, Hey, Mr. Romero, you know, like, are, you know, are you available? Can we call you again? You know, they, did it go, did everything go well? Like, oh my, like, I was, oh my goodness. Like I, you know, it went amazing. I loved it. You know, like, here's my, here's my card. Call me if you guys need any more, like, you know, support. I'm, you know, I would, I would love to come back to your, to your school and, you know, continue. And they would eventually call me, you know, I went, I kept going for like X amount of days to the, the different, uh, the same, the same, the same preschool, like a uh, classroom, but just different settings or different, like different classrooms with different right. teachers. And, um, and that's how it started. So that's how I started uh, working with, with the special education and not only special education, but also with early education, like with, uh, with, with the little ones, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and it just, my passion just grew from there. And I actually got a, I actually was able, to, I actually went to a, an, uh, I got a position for the long term. And I was able to work with another, like another male, like early education teacher, you know, and, and I was there for a while and, you know, we, and we had a really, when I got there, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to be the only male teacher here, you know, and I, and I joke with him too. He's, 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 he's a really good friend of mine. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, like I walk in and I see this guy, you know, he's just sitting there like on the table with these little kids just peeling oranges for them. He's wearing his <laughs> USC jacket. And I'm like, and, I, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm so-and-so. Okay, cool. You know, welcome to our classroom. And he's, and I'm like, oh, you know, so is, is there, not that he was like one of the aides there, you know? And I was like, oh, so is, uh, is, is there, is there another teacher here? Like, we're who to talk to? Oh yeah, I'm the teacher. I'm like, oh, you're a teacher. You're yeah. You're like, yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> like, no way. Like, okay, cool. You know? And, yeah. and you know, like, so I, we always, I always talk, we talk about it sometimes, you know, that experience I've had with him, you know, and, uh, and, you know, that's, working with him and working in his, in his, in his school and working in his classroom, it just only made my passion grow for working with in early education. And, you know, and it just led to me being in this field and, you know, it, it is, it is a, it is a tough, it is a tough field to work in, but, you know, I think for, for me, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have it another way. Like it's, it's, I'm really, for it. I have the yeah. passion for it, you know, and it's, like it's tough. I'm not gonna tell you it's easy. You know, like there's days that you know it's it's we're it's it's cool sailing, and there's days that you know it's we're going through the storm together. You know, and we're just <laughs> right, and it's right. and it's but you know, like I just I love it. You know, and it's 
It's, I love to hear that. Yeah. Everyone transfer your kid over to Mr. Romero's class. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And, you know, in answering this, you kind of touched on something that I feel like every time I talk to you, I ask you this question, but I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. It is a female dominated industry. When you mm. first joined on, was there discrimination? Was there gender bias? What was your experience coming in as a man? And, you know, even if it was like at a micro level and a macro level, if you can share mm. that. I mean, for myself, you know, um, I haven't, I haven't per se, I haven't per se ever, like uh, felt any sort of like kind of like discrimination or anything against me for right. being a, a male teacher. But, uh, you know, I, you know, not, not from other, from other like educators or from other like you know, uh, teachers out there, but maybe from like, maybe you see it from parents, you know, like, oh, like, who is mm -hmm. this guy? You know, what is, mm -hmm. what is he doing? You know, like, because, you know, as, as you know, as maybe a parent, you normally don't see like male educators, you know, right. in the, in, in like an elementary school setting, you know, it's, so it's kind of, it's, it kind of takes you aback a little bit, you know, you do see it more like in high school, middle school settings, right. you know, and, uh, and for me, you know, like I've, you know, in the, from the time that I've been, I, I've been, that I've been an educator, I haven't, per se like seen any of that you know but and I think now you know it's the I think education is just taking a turn you know where like I think maybe before you know it was a little more like bias oh, you know then. It, yeah. bias and it was biased <laughs> oh you know teachers <laughs> are just females you know teachers right. are, are like it's just that's you know like you don't really see male teachers. You were teachers a weirdo like, if you were a man teacher. Yeah, no, yeah, you were, yeah. No, it's true. You know, like you want to be a teacher. Like why? You right, know, you're. Right. You know, it's like yeah. And, you know, and it, it would, and it was something I experienced. You know, like in when I was going to college. You know, doing my uh doing my edu educational uh, preparation program. You know, like I was pretty much the only male in the classroom from like 25, 26. You know, in, like students in there. You know, like everybody right. else was a female. So you know, it was just me you know working with all these females in the classroom you know and it's like your Beyonce had to get into a lot of fights I'm just gonna nah. <laughs> <laughs> no she you know she uh she she understood you know and uh yeah but you know so for them you know for me it was it was just taking it back you know because I'm I'm the only male and it was rare when I would have like I did have other other like male friends like that are that were teachers, in, in my yeah. program there were teachers in my programs all in my program also but you know like for me like normally it'd just be me or just be me and this, this other guy in there and you know and just be like all the girls um but you know i think recently now there's we're seeing more a more influx of like male teachers coming into like into education you know right. it's like that kind of that's uh, maybe that uh stigma of like it's only for women like it's it's kind of being broken down you know and we honestly right. do need more male educators you know to, to we need more of them you know we do need more of them you know like so, you know, it's, you know, some of these, some of these kids, you know, they do need that male role model, you know, that they could, you know, see like in a school setting, you know, they do need that. Right, right. And I think it's also a big generational shift, right? As you mentioned, before it was heavily driven by female teachers, but now there, there was, I feel like when I was starting off my career and, um, the school LAUSD was going through all of the protests and, you know, teachers fighting for their rights. There's a desperation for teachers. You need yeah. people out in the field teaching the children. And I think you kind of hit the nail with salary wise, like teachers were not getting paid um, enough money. And if you really don't have teachers like yourself who are doing it for the passion, it is hard to stay in the field and deal with everything that you're dealing with. So it's nice to see the shift and it's good to also spread awareness that as a male, you do have this opportunity. It's a different culture and it's giving back. I think the educators are the first focal point of kids. You're, they're spending eight hours a day. Sometimes you're spending more time with your teachers than you are with your parents. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, that impact that you're giving, that positive, that positivity that you're spreading as a teacher, it's like, oh, Mr. Romero, you know, got me to do this. I remember Mr. Lemos for me. Shout out mm -hmm. to Mr. Lemos. He was my <laughs> history teacher. And I I felt like he, I, he helped me when I got kicked out of school, the first person I thought of was Mr. Lemos because you know what? He used to make us outline our history textbooks. And when I was like being all sad girl in the community college library, I was like, oh, I, there's no option to fail out of school because my parents were also like, you got to get your degree. Yeah. And I was like, let me do this outline that Mr. Lemos used to make us do. And look at me now. I'm successful. I've, 
I'm in my master's program. Mm. And it's all thanks to that impact he made in middle school. And so, yeah. you know, shout out to all the men, go become teachers, <laughs> go become substitute teachers. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do kind of want to touch base on the work culture for teachers. Would you say it's a toxic work environment? It's a positive work environment, or is it dependent on the school that you are working in? I think it honestly, like being a substitute teacher, you know, I was able to kind of go to different school settings, you know, so you know, even though I was only there for a short period of time, you know, every school has its own, it's like its own little like ecosystem, Okay. you know, so it's, it just honestly depends where you go, but you know, where, where I'm at currently right now, like I honestly, like I couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for like a better, like community of teachers to be working with, you know, I'm, you know, I'm still relatively new, you know, to, to, and you to not only to the school but just to education itself right and you know and whenever i have any questions or you know something you know i'm always they're always helpful and resourceful to you know answer those questions for me you know or like help me out in any certain way you know so it just honestly depends you know like where where you kind of like land you know because i do have a i do have like i do know stories of you know like that's you know some some of my colleagues they don't maybe they don't work in necessarily best work environment you know mm -hmm. and it's it's or it's 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 a little harder for them you know to right. navigate things there um you know but like it's it honestly just depends but you know where where i'm where i'm currently at you know like it's 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 po it's, it's all positive, positive. Well, it's positive good. you know and it's you know where you you know that every teacher there they're there to help out the community you know because some of them actually grew in the community and you know they're a part they've been a part of that community for like x amount of years you know like right. for some of the teachers that are there actually you know they they actually, you know, have, they're now teaching this, they're the son of, you know, of the, their student that would, that they had like in first grade or, you know, like yeah. now, or some of them, it's, it's even like, you know, it's, it's wild, you know, they, they're teaching the third generation now, they're teaching the grand, the wow. grandbaby, you know, like, so. They're you know, legacy oh, students. It, yeah, they're <laughs> legacy students, you know, they're part of the community, you know, and yeah. it's like, oh, Miss so-and-so or Mr. So-and-so now, you know, he's your, he's your teacher, he was my teacher, you know, and, you know, it's, it's a whole family thing, you know, so you know, it's a very, it's a very close knit thing, you know? So I, you know, and, and kind of like, I think it helps out and it goes back to the whole, like, you know, uh, the salary, it goes all, right. uh, it's cool. It goes back to, you know, like, you know, and I think I was, I was listening to your, your other podcast, you know, also, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to buy a house right now. Right. Being, being a homeowner right now is super difficult, you know? So, you know, for a lot of educators that are working in schools, you know, they, they don't live in the community they actually serve, you know? Right. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Let me get some water. Yeah, no worries. You know, it's and, and it's for some of them, you know, they actually have to, you know, commute. You know, they have to live far away and commute to the school they work in, you know. And, you know, and I think, you know, the right now, you know, we the 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 uh, union right now, we're they're, they're in negotiations, you know, with the district, you know, trying to get, you know, teachers right now like a, a, a salary increase, you know, and also you know, work with, work with, uh, having like a smaller classrooms, you know, and getting more support for the students in the schools, you know, so that's what's going on right now. And, you know, like a lot of, uh, for a lot of us right now, you know, it's that it's, it, it would be a huge help, you know, for future teachers that are coming into, you know, to the, to, to teaching, you know, to be able to buy that first home, to be right. able to, to, you know, live in that community, to serve their community. They actually, they work in, you know, Right. And, you know, right now that you sort of touched based on salary, mm -hmm. can you share your salary negotiations going into your position? And then it seems like now the union negotiates salary. Could you kind of go into that? So, you know, salary, salary, because it's a public, it's a public thing. So you could go on LAUs, you could go on Long Beach, Cal, Long Beach Unified. <laughs> you could go, just to, <laughs> right? You you go on to any 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 unified school district. And you could check how much you know what what the salary is for when mm -hmm. you start as a teacher. Right. You could see you could see the the salary breakdown. You know, um, so as and it gives you like a different you know brackets, different numbers, and that just depends how many like how many units you have. So the more units you have, like for example, the, the units or well, we hold on, like, did you know this going into 
your, you know, like application process or now that, you know, in the field, you understood this information? I know I, I knew a little beforehand, you know, like, you know, I kind of like, what, what am I, what am I getting myself into? You know? So I was like, I kind of did, I did a research too, you know, I did research oh, perfect. myself yeah. and then, you know, so I was like, kind of, I kind of saw like, well, well, what, what it looked like, you know? And I, I looked at, I looked at several districts, you know, before I chose where I zeroed in where, where I wanted to, where I wanted to be in. And, you know, now, you know, it's, it's, if you look at it, it's very, it's very, very good. It's LUZ is pretty good, but it could be better, okay. you know, and, and, and compare and that's, and that goes off to, you know, other, other school districts around the, in the nation, you know, in education itself, you know, we do need to give our educators and teachers a, a salary increase because, you know, the cost of living has gone up, you know, right. everything has gone up, you know, you can't eggs now are like $12 for like 12, 12 <laughs> eggs. Now is a dollar. It's a dollar. I'm not eating egg. eggs. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you know, eggs. A boycotting eggs. Oh man. <laughs> You know, for, for, you know, growing up, our diet was eggs all the time, you know, know so yeah. it's, it's frijoles con huevos, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, like it's like, you know, it, right now it's, it's negotiations. There were, you know, if it's, there was a strike three years ago, you know, it, there's, there was a strike three years ago that it was, you know, it was, it was in the news, you know, all the teachers, ra you know, rallying in downtown, you know, and, you know, fighting for, you know, for what they needed to fight for back then. You know, and it's just going on now, you know, and it's and as and it's not only educators that are, you know, in negotiations, but also it's like the it's like the aides that are working in a classroom, it's the cafeteria right. workers, it's the bus drivers, you know, it's the it's it's the janitors, you know, they they all they're they're all hey, you know, we need it, we need a little, we need a little 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 more money, you know, because you right, know, we right it, the cost of living has gone up, you know, and it's you know, a bedroom now and in, in a, a one, a two, a one, a one, a one bedroom now here in uh in, in LA is like almost two thousand dollars you know how could someone afford that a single person could not afford that and for the listeners i did google what the average lausd salary is and it is 65 652 which is 63 percent <clears throat> above the national average but you have to consider that this is los angeles and if you are a teacher that has a family you have people that you have to support and today that's normally the case you mm -hmm have to be willing to compromise and give our educators, you know, that financial backing, because at the end of the day, I don't, I don't have kids, you don't have kids. But from what I hear, daycare is expensive. And parents have to drop a lot of money to take care of their kids when they're infants before they can reach school. So yeah. knowing that you have this high, you know, price within just caring your caring for your children, Imagine the value you really should be putting into the people who are with your kids eight hours a day, sometimes longer with after school programs. And that's one reason why I am pro union, even being in high school. I remember our teachers walking out and going mm -hmm. to these protests, my mom taking us there because she was also one that really pushed education on us. And it's it's knowing that these are employees of the people right? Because you are making an impact in every single community that you're a part of. And as we're talking about unions, could you kind of give us a stance on one? How about we do this? How, how can the public support <clears throat> teachers when it comes to your union fights? You know, just stand, just stand with teachers, just stand, just stand with teachers, you know, honestly, like, you know, it's, it's that, that, and that's what it is, you know, like, uh, you know, and you, you know, you, you see it, you know, like, you know, I, you know, I greet every, like when in my school, you know, and I don't, even though that student is not part of my class, they're not part of my classroom. I, I, I take the time to, Hey, what's your name? Oh, my name is so-and-so. Hey, so-and-so. Good morning. I'm Mr. Romero. And, you know, when I see him the next day, I say, Hey, good morning. You know, Ernesto, how's, how's it going? And that's, oh, man, no, good Mr. Romero. You know, like I, you know, as and I see it from all all the teachers that are out there, you know, they're they're they work in this field, you know, they they go above and beyond to, you know, provide the support and provide the help for for the students in our and that go to our school, you know. Because a lot of a lot of the, the students that go to our schools, you know, in, in, in any other school in any schools in the nation, you know, they they might they might come from a you know um, a, a, a low social, you know, social income level, you know, they mm -hmm. might be a single mom, might be a single dad, you know, working, you know, they that student stays, you know, <clears throat> doesn't leave right. at 245, you know, because right. mom doesn't get mom or dad doesn't they, they don't get out of work at 245. They right, probably right. get on until six o'clock, you know. <clears throat> I'm sorry. 
and um and you know so they they're they're they not only stay they're not only there during the whole day but they, they stay in the after school programs you know so they stay with other teachers out there you know and they're mm -hmm. there you know they're there like helping them out in their home or helping them out in anything they can you know providing that extra support for them <coughs> sorry you're um, sick you're sick <laughs> no i'm not sick i'm just my throat my my throat is dry actually uh give me some water please thank you i was on my way <laughs> thank you <laughs> That's why you're marrying her. Oh. Exactly. You know, she, 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 she got me. She got me. You're right. And <clears throat> we, we, yeah, she's like, I got you. I hear him coughing and get him some water. <laughs> no, but, you know, going back to, you know, like, uh, you know, the like as parents, sh they should stand with the teachers. They should stand with right. not only the teachers, but also with the aides that are there supporting their students, you know, throughout the whole day through the, through the, through the, through the, um, through the days to just come, you know, to provide, you know, uh, supervise, you know, in the, in the playground, you know, that the, right. the, the ones that help out with, you know, with uh, the parent workshops, everything, you know, they're, they're supporting, they're, they're supporting not only like the students, but also the parents that come into the school. And, you know, like that's, honestly, that's the best thing. That's the best way to show your support for teachers is with sta is standing with them. Right. And with, you know, union being fresh on our mind, how would you, um, what would you say to someone who's contemplating, you know, whether they want to join the union or be a, be a teacher that's not in the union? And if you are okay with sharing, are you in the union? And what did that look like for you? Um, I am in a union, you know, like, and as, as an educator, you know, for me, like I, you know, I, for me personally, I do recommend it, <clears throat> you know, because they, they're going to be there for you. They're going to be there to support you, you know, and, you know, if something's going on, you know, that you feel is not going right, you call them and they'll, they'll be there to support you and stand with you, you know, to, Hey, this is so-and-so, you know, you're violating their contract, whatever it might be, you know, they're going to stand with you. And, you know, for me, like it's, it's, you know, it started when I, when I started as a substitute teacher, you know, I, I went through the, I went through the, I went through the process of being hired as a substitute teacher. And when, during that process, you know, uh, the union does come in, you they, they come in and hey, they talk to you, hey, we're the union. This is what we, we do for you guys This is the way we support you guys, you know, and just know we're going to stand with you. We're always going to do have the best intentions to help you as educators in your classroom, you know, and we're going to be there for you. And 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 it's been <clears throat> nothing but positive things with them with with the union. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and since they once I actually joined, like I, I, I've actually been a, a part of the union. Oh, that's fantastic. And do you see that their efforts are honest? Like you said that they're negotiating your salary. Do you have enough trust in them? And you've seen their plan of action to gain, getting your, your wants right within these negotiations. Oh yeah. Mo mo most definitely. Most definitely. Um, you know, uh, they, right now they're, they're going to we it's everything's public too so <clears throat> they're going right. through there there you could even google it you'll you'll see what's going on so they're they're going through what we call bargaining so they're kind of like sitting at they're sitting at the, at the table with the with the district saying hey you know um we need to we need to come with this is what we want we want smaller classrooms we want more nurses in schools you know we want more like you know uh psychologists you know support for our students more social emotional support for our students right. and you know we want all these things you know to not only support students, but also support the teachers. And, you know, and they're, they're, you know, they're, they're bargaining with them and, you know, they're going back and forth. Hey, look, what are, can we do this? Can we do that? Let's do this. No, we can't, you know, this X, Y, and Z. And, you know, and currently right now, you know, like, uh, the, 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 the district has almost $5 billion in reserves, you know, and they have a lot of money, you know, and, right. and it's, and it's just sitting there and, you know, and, and, but they're, but, you know, they're, they're, their their action right now their 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 speech right now say hey well we're just saving it for a rainy day you know that's mm -hmm. what we're saving it for and it's like hey you know it's raining right now you know it's right you know we're we just we just came we just came out of pandemic you know a lot of students have have regress and you know and we need it we need to pick up the slack and we need to you know come support them you know and we need it we need we need to come do a better job <clears throat> and you know we have all this funding that we could that needs to be better used for the schools and you know to help support our students that's fantastic and that was you know, something that I was about to ask you, because when, you know, the president or when the governor are working on budgets, we hear of the large sums that are going to LAUSD. Is it your 
passion because you are in the union now, but this self-awareness of how much money is getting trickled down and holding people accountable, is that something that teachers should have in their day-to-day mindset <laughs> of, hey, we need to hold these people accountable. This is knowledge. This is information that we can leverage and really use. Now, before you were in the union, were you aware of that? Did you know how much money they had in the reserve? Um, so before, like, I I, I joined, you know, uh, I joined, like, um, the last strike was pre before pandemic, I believe it's 2018, 2019 mm-hmm. was the last one. So I joined a little bit ap- after I was I started afterwards after that after that uh that huge right. uh huge strike that, that that happened during that time, and you know they had an X amount of uh, money you know during that time you know and they they used that to you know there was a salary increase for everybody you know for substitute teachers for <coughs> for educators and you know for all the other for all the support staff that work at schools. Um, but you know now like it's it, ha- it has increased a lot more because you know uh, Gavin Newsom. They provide an X amount of support, you know, to to all the public schools in our state, and also, you know, the the, the government itself, you know, has provided provided X amount of money for all all the schools, you know, and you know now now being in the in the system, you know, like there, and it's not only like LAUSD, but it's you know it's all around, you know, it's, right, it's also right. these these schools you hear about, like in like in you know Oklahoma or Texas, you know, that do that mm-hmm. maybe there's there's schools, you know their AC isn't working, you know, something is broken, you know, like there is money out there to fix this, you know, there is, there are, there are, there is this X amount of money to, you know, get brand new tables, get brand new chairs, get brand new textbooks, you know, there's, you know, you probably remember going to, to school, you know, and, you know, your text, your high school textbook was just all, yeah, yeah, you know, (laughs) old, you know, it went up, it went up to President Reagan or something, you know, we're already on Bush, you know, like, (laughs) Yeah, very outdated. Very, now, very outdated, you know? Yeah, no, I, I can sympathize with that because <laughs> I think what people don't understand with this, like, uh, you kind of have to think of LAUSD as a big corporate company, right? Because I know when that controversy was occurring, I was working in downtown LA, so I was seeing all the teachers, you know, go out and all of that. They, like, <clears throat> shut everything down. Yeah. But it's it's sort of reading, and I don't want to say LAUSD executives are the villain, but there's a lot of corruption that goes hand in hand. There's a lot of politics that LAUSD and even the unions are sort of involved in because I don't know how you feel about the unions backing certain politicians or how much you're paying attention to that. But it's it's interesting to see is like if there is a villain within this, is it the executives that are refusing to distribute funding that is meant to help children? I, it's, I think there's a, it's a huge overall, it's not only one villain per se, you know, I want to say it's just, it's a huge, it's, it's, it's a huge thing, you know, I think as a country itself, you know, we kind of place education in the the backseat of, you know, of, of, of our, you know, of like our, what needs to be the top, you know, we need to fix our educational system, you know, and you know, it's not a focus, you know, we, you know, we decided to spend more money on, you know, on defense and military spending, you know, we decided to spend money more on like bailing out, you know, these corporations, you know, and right. we forget about the, the little, the little people, the little guy, you know, and that's, that's everyday people that go to school, you know, everyday right. children, you know, and, you know, we rank who knows how low in, you know, education in the whole world. And, you know, it's, it's a whole, I think it's a whole systemic thing that it just, there needs to be a change. But it's right. just going to be really hard. But, you know, going back to the whole like LAUSD thing, you know, like uh, I think there's just, you know, we've we've gone away from, you know, of, you know, of, of this of this. I think we gone away from this philosophy, you know, of uh, teaching for fun, mm-hmm. you know, like and like, you know, like making teaching fun, you know, making teaching, you know, like or just learning itself fun, you know having learning about art you know how can you express yourself as an art major or you know right there was there's no there pretty much is little to no art now in schools you know little That's little to I no hear. little to no music programs little to no like you know like like technology uh, i mean like little robotics or something you know something like a fun elective you know that, that we have in school is now pretty much drilling you with math and english you know and that's what like the whole system requires you to be proficient in math and english and you know and if you're not meeting those numbers you know you're kind of like Hey, we're not gonna give you X amount of funding, or you're 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 not meeting what we need we need you to to meet, you know. So it's a whole 
thing you know i don't think it's per se it's like the it's like the yeah there's one bill villain you know yes you know if, if, if you know if if the super tells hey you know what guys we do have this money and bam let's do it like if he came in if he's coming in with that positive change you know hey let's make some change and you know we have this money let's use it you right. know this this would have been taken this would have been taken care of you know day one when he first came into into the office because this is his first first term coming into being the lead the superintendent you know right and i know you guys have all no and and you know like uh <clears throat> and you know like uh it's just i think there's a lot of political influence there's a lot of right. like corporate influencing now you know that that's going on you know like i know for you know for for myself you know uh going into the field you know like there when when uh you know trump was president he had a uh, betty betty devos you know in, mm -hmm. in in his educational you know she was the head of the educational thing and right. the educational federal thing and you know it was she was pretty much against public schools you know it, she was it was kind of like a counter thing to her to her to her agenda and you know and that did hurt a lot of like you know our our educational growth and you know it's just there needs to be a there needs to be a more direct change to education but it's right. just it's it's a i would say it's like kind of like the titanic it's 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 going to take a really long time to make that turn you know but Right. I think we we are heading in there. We've been heading in the right path, but it's just it's too big of a ship to turn. Right. And would you say this is your biggest like career frustration in seeing the direction that it <clears throat> should go? Because it's it's not like you have a toxic work environment. Right. But there yeah. are you can't be a teacher and not be involved in politics. And from what it sounds like, it's it's maybe perhaps the metrics aren't aligned with the impact of what the field is and in these type of negotiations and talks <clears throat> like do you teachers have a chance to make an impact or how do you make suggestions through the union well you know like uh, at each school there is a union representative so there is a teacher that takes on that role to be a representative for the school to be for that for for the union so you know they they they're able to attend those virtual meetings or able to get their attend they attend those meetings and they bring that information back to the teachers that at their at their their own schools mm -hmm. and say hey this is going on you know this is, this is what uh the district has been coming up with or this is what the union has been you know coming back you know trying to like negotiate with them you know so there is there is you know like a system of you know hey there there isn't there isn't just this person you know in in a in a in a in a in a, in a setting somewhere that you don't even know about you know and they're talking about these things no there is like there are representatives, you know, from each specific like uh, region in, in our in our district that are that are present there. And they really they relay that that message back or those what's happening back into into the schools. And, and you know, we we get to discuss that in the schools or we have our own meetings where, you know, we kind of as educators know, get an update what's going on. <clears throat> and and yeah, so it's there, there's always like a kind of there's always like a line. There's always like, a you know, we always have a line of communication to what's going on. That's fantastic. And to sort of segue this into um, your career, right? Because it is, it is a fully, uh, it's a full circle with teachers, right? You're teaching, yeah. you're political, you're involved in the community. Uh, There's so many different, it's a multifaceted <clears throat> position, right? And for you, you're involved in the union now, what are your career goals? as a, is it teach you want to be a teacher for the next you know 50 years until you retire do you want to be a principal like do you have a plan for your career i honestly do um so for myself you know um i am a, a teacher right now mm -hmm. and you know right now i'm trying to and, and this is just goes based on like my own philosophy in my own life the, how i apply myself into every career that i that i've gone to um you know i try to be the best that i would that i can what I'm, where I'm where, where, where I'm currently at, what I'm currently doing. So, you know, I feel as right now, I'm still tr striving to be the best version of myself as a teacher right now. And eventually, you know, like I, you know, I could be teaching for maybe like the next 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, but my journey itself is not to be a teacher forever. But, you know, I do. I, well, I do want to be a teacher forever, but I want to continue in my journey as an educator, you know, and that, you know, might be, you know, sharing my knowledge that I experienced, you know, in the, in my own experience, in the, my, own, my own classroom, in my own field, you know, what maybe like future students, you know, maybe it, it will be teaching like at a community college or teaching at a college right. level, you know, and teaching those, passing my knowledge and passing my information down to future, future generation of teachers coming into, you know, into the system. And, you know, just, yeah, just going based on that, you know, and 
you know, wherever it might take me, you know, I just know that I'm always going to be an, an educator, a teacher, but I want to not only do it at the current level that I'm doing it at, but I want to do it at a greater level. That's fantastic to hear. And when you're thinking of this plan, is it because to me, I think end goal. And then as I'm in the motions, I'm thinking yeah. year to year, right? Mm -hmm. Or right now I have this new position. So I'm probably seeing, thinking two to three years later, right? Yeah. Do you have a similar trajectory or because, you know, again, being a teacher is very special, right? So it's like 15 years, 10 years. What is that plan for someone that might be a career driven teacher, that pathway there? Do you have any advice? Um, so for my for, for myself currently right now, like I'm actually going to I'm actually applying to get my graduate degree <clears throat> to pursue my master's degree. Um, you know, so that's my next journey right now. Uh, so, you know, I kind of see my I always kind of see my what I've done. I always kind of see I always look back at what I what I've done in the last five years, what I've done in the last 10 years and what my next five years and 10 years are going to look like, you know, and currently right now mm -hmm. where I'm at, you know, that I'm. Um, my next my next few years is going to be you know getting my master's degree right. and you know taking it from there you know where where my that that might lead me to you know eventually you know after that my next goal is to be nationally get nationally board certified you know as a as a teacher as well and you know i and see where that see where that that next step is going to take me you know and for there's many you know i think there's many opportunities to work in education out there you know uh for 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 teachers you know, but it's trying to, it's just looking for those opportunities, you know, and just having that, just having that, you know, I wouldn't, I would say like taking that chance on yourself to just, you know, Hey, you know, you're good at what you're doing, you know, why not apply it to, you know, if I'm just one teacher teaching, you know, 15 students, what if I, you know, could teach the next 15 teachers to teach the next 15 students, you know, right. now you're multiplying yourself to teach the 300 students, you know, and you're making a greater change, you know, so for myself, you know, like I do see it as, you know, let's I take it. I take it like in about like, a you know, five year window. I'm going to be doing this for the next five years and then we'll we'll see where we're at. But always keeping the keeping my eye, my eye on what's ahead, you know, in the horizon. Right. Hey, OK, I'm here right now. I know what I know what what's going to take for me to get to this point. This is where I'm going to be at. OK, what's what's afterwards? Not, you know, just having that little rough travel. Like, hey, OK, we're going to that's something that I could pursue. Let's just keep that. Let's just file that back in right, there, you know, right. and let's keep it there, you know, and, but let's, you know, let's focus on what we're doing right now and try to be the best that we can right now, get the, get the most knowledge, get the most experience and, you know, and just keep, keep moving forward. No, that's fantastic. And now that we're in the topic of obtaining a master's degree, do you, how is that decision for you? Did you think, I'm doing this because I know eventually I want to teach at a higher ed level, you know, community college or going to just a four year university, or is there a benefit to a day to day teacher that doesn't plan to do that to go back and get their master's? Um, for me, it's for, for myself, you know, and then I, and, you know, looking, looking back at it, you know, like looking, looking at it from my own perspective, you know, uh, I eventually, you, know, you do need that, you know, graduate degree, the master's degree to be able to teach at a college level, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, <clears throat> that's, that's important to be able to do that. So I have, I, I know, I, I know I need that, that I need that to be there. But for myself, you know, for myself now, you know, there's brand new things that I, that, that are, that are in educational field that are in educational books that I mean, I know about yet, you know, and those are new things that I want to learn to kind of bring back into my classroom, to bring back into my own, my own estate, my own uh, profession, you know, and just keep growing as an educator, you know, and as for myself, you know, it's education, it's your, it's like pivoting. You always, there's something you coming out, right. you know, who knows what the next new technology is going to be. And then, you know, you have to learn that or what the next new curriculum is going to be. You have to learn that, you know, what, or what new, new, new practices are out there that, you know, are, are going to be better for you, better supports. You know, like I'll, I'll give you one little like example, you know, I, how yeah. many times, how many times have you, have you heard, you know, maybe you heard growing up, like, you know, going to school, like, like no running, <laughs> like no running, right? Your teacher yeah. would tell you, no, don't yeah. run, you know, don't stop. No, liability. Running, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> liability, you know, you're going to fall, you know, but like, right. you know, now something that, you know, we say now is like, use walking feet, use walking oh, feet, very you know, so yes. you, you, so you tell, you tell the student what you want them to do. You don't tell them no. Because maybe the uh, the no is a trigger for them, you know. It's like, you no, know, my mom tells you no. I'm not gonna listen to you. I'm not gonna no. You're so, yeah. I don't care. 
better you tell them use walking feet, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm OK, I'm going to use walking feet. You know, so there's all these little like new things that you pick up, you know, that you might not might not know, you know, that you that you knew before. Right. And there's all there's whole new things. So I'm I, for me, I'm, I've always loved learning. I love to learn new things. And that's why I want to pursue myself into getting like a getting my master's degree and just maybe even, even going further to a PhD. Who knows? But that's like down the line. <laughs> somewhere, Dr. Right. Romero, but, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, but, but you know, why not? You know, why not? Yeah. You know, it's, if, it's, you, if you could do it, you could do it, you know, and uh. But that's 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 one of the reasons why I want to you know continue going to that's to fantastic getting getting an education for myself, right? And you know I think we <clears> shared <throat> Sarah's similar career background where we took a few years off um, and then pursued a master's degree. What was that click for you to go back to school and just get it done? Um, like for myself, you know, I think as an educator, you know, getting a master's is just like a it's 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 an extra it's an extra it's an extra like cap on your ha- on your hat you mm-hmm. know like you know right. it's it's really it's really awesome to be to have a master's and you know for for me you know my fiance she recently got her master's so you know like she she went through the whole process of it i was you know i was there with her you know on right. through 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 zoom and everything so <laughs> you know she if she could do it i could do it right you know right. and and you know like i i i see it as now like you know i i i could do it you know i it's something that i'm i'm able to i i know i could I could, it's achievable. I could do, you know, and why not? You know, if I have the time to do it, if I have, you know, the, the, you know, the, the time, the 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 time and everything, you know, Mm -hmm. the energy I could, you know, why not do it? You know, why not better now? Why not better myself into uh, getting a higher education? Right. No, that's fantastic. And Mm -hmm. again, to the listeners out there, and that's and I met through his fiance and, Mm -hmm. It was interesting because, you know, in listening to her journey and obtaining her master's degree, the one thing that she just was solidified in was your support. And now mm-hmm. it's your turn. What is that conversation like? Like, hey, babe, I need your support now. And, you know, I'm going to be a stay at home <laughs> fiance. Like, what was that conversation like? Maybe share your input on your support with her. And now the conversation you had with her supporting you with that. Yeah, of course. You know, I think I think when she first came up to me, you know, and said she was going to get her master's, I was like, I was like, cool, you know, that's awesome. You know, go for it. You know, I'll be there to support you, you know, and, you know, I just I just knew going into it how how college work is, you know, you're you know, you have to do X amount of, you know, assignments. You know, there's going to be a lot of time you're on teach your, you know, you're learning and you're going to class, you know, so I knew, you know, that, hey, I might not spend a lot of time with you. And, you know, I have to know that that's 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 okay you know that you need to do this you know to right. better yourself so you know for me you know i just provided her the best support that i could you know making sure you know that she had enough water you know had her little like <laughs> snacks and everything you know right no nope. but you know like i was i was always there to you know provide her that that support you know when whatever she might need you know and you know she was able to get her degree you know and that's that's awesome you know and now and not going back to you know going going to me now pursuing my master's right you know we've had the conversation you know where she would she knows that you know i'm not only am i going to be busy as you know be, being a teacher but, you know now i might be busy going also doing this extra course courses in college or you know doing this like having these extra assignments that I, you know that's there's going to be time consuming right. but you know we have that mutual understanding that yeah hey you know i'm gonna even though i might not spend too a lot of time with you right now you know i'm always gonna we're always gonna make t- time for each other you know like hey it might be it might not be Tuesday or Thursday, but maybe that Friday or mm-hmm. Saturday, you know, it's no, no, no coursework, no nothing. And right. like having that one to one time or having the time to spend together. And, you know, like she and I know she, I know she will like she she not only supports she supports us, you know, and in in, here in the household, you know, like, hey, you know, like with, you know, maybe like going out and buying groceries or, you know, mm-hmm. helping like, you know, clean because maybe I have to do something, you know, so. Right. We we we're 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 really good at communicating with one another. You know what our needs are and how we could best support each other. No, that's fantastic because I think Mm -hmm. in the age range or just people within their professional journey, having that support from a partner is critical to the mindset. You know, to your drive, to maybe your. not in motivation. There we go. I wanted to use the word yeah. motivation. Um, because, you know, 
you can have a partner who isn't supportive and they're saying, why are you yeah. trying to get your master's degree? You're not yeah. giving me enough time. And if you're going to be selfish, that probably, that person probably isn't for you because you want yeah. the best for your partner. You want them True. to grow. Yeah. And it's nice to see because you guys are a young, thriving couple moving forward together. Mm -hmm. And I think people don't really think and assess you know, how valuable that is. I mean, you guys clearly do, but you sort of see sometimes that there's jealousy between partners and there's like animosity or resentment and it's hard, but again, it's having that conversation being grown up and also respecting each other because you guys are in different fields, but you yeah. work harmoniously together. So it's nice to see, um, and to sort of segue into sort of, um, a fun question, right? Not that yeah. you and Violet have issues, but <laughs> when you have, you know, home problems, right? Or you're struggling through something, whether you fight with a friend or something, how do you deal with that as a teacher? Like, and not taking that sort of baggage or like taking it out on the kid and saying, no recess for anybody today. <laughs> like, what does that look like for you with your emotional intelligence and just, just differentiating <clears throat> both, right? Both aspects of your life. Yeah, of course. You know, I think, you know, as as just an adult, you know, as, you know, as someone that's in a relationship, you know, or anybody's in a relationship, you know, right. you have to be able to dif differentiate, you know, what home life and work life, you know, and, you know, just, uh, just knowing that there's, <clears throat> there's, there's space, there's time and space for every single one of them, you know, sometimes they do intermix and everything, you know, but, you know, when you are, when someone is going through those kind of like those little rough patches in the relationship, right. you know, you have to know you have to know how to navigate them, you know, and not let that either, you know, get in getting your in your professional career, you know, or vice versa. Or let's say something's going on at work and letting that melt over into your your relationship, you know. Right. So you have to just be mindful of those things, you know. But I think just having that open communication and just talking about things, you know, is that's gonna help you out, you know, and just hey, what's up? What's going on? Why are we what's going on? Why are we why are you upset? Why am I why or oh, or she or that person telling you you know, why are you upset? What's going on? Right. Oh, you know, I'm stressed at work or this is what's going on or so and so is stressing me out or, you know, hey, you know, you did not do this. Or I did not do that. You know, so it's just, OK, you know, I'm sorry. You know, let's you're right. I need to fix this or you know what? Let maybe that, you know, that didn't happen. At, you know, that that didn't happen. You know, so I think it's always having that open communication and just, you know, talking, talking through things, because, you know, what's it's not great to, you know, if something's going on to carry that with you the whole day, you know, or, right. or, you know, like think someone's, someone wants something, you know, don't go to sleep mad, you know, mm -hmm. like try to just, you know, try to talk things out beforehand, you know, and just, you know, Hey, you want to, you always want to be, you know, okay with your, 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 uh, your partner, you know, it's, you're, you're a team, you know, and if someone, the team is not, you know, is, is, you know, not doing a great job, you know, you want to, Hey, you want to give them a, re you want to check them, you know, end up, in the old, and always in a respectful way right never in a disrespectful way right because at, at the end of the day you're both you're both teams and you know you're working together and you know for us that's that's what work that's what's working you know we we you know we we do our best to always communicate with one another you know i know she does a way better job of communicating with me you know but i always try my best to communicate with her you right. know and and you know we always work we always work through things and you know always like hey like we don't if we're upset about something, you know, we don't try to like make make we don't try to let that, you know, interfere with our with the professional right. professional job. You know, we just try to keep it at home, you know, and see and try to work that work that out. No, that's and fantastic. <clears throat> mm -hmm. No, Do no, you, no, yeah. yeah, sorry. It's it's more of like a and I was going to say as women, you know, we go through periods and it's like a little bit harder to sort of just differentiate and really just separate the two working with women <clears throat> and we're very pro women here and this was a feminist right this is just an <laughs> honest conversation would you say that maybe your female counterparts sort of struggle a little bit more or would you say they handle it seamlessly because the field sort of preps you to not allow things like that well i mean in any in any job you know, you go through your own personal, you know, kind of struggles, you know, right. so I wouldn't just say it's like, just uh, like as an educator, but you know, it could be as a doctor, it could be as a lawyer, you know, everybody right. goes through those individual struggles, right. And I think it's just, I think you were, I think you maybe said this earlier, but you know, it's having that just emotional intelligence, you know, right. just, you know, of 
you know, just, okay, why am I anxious? Why am I, why am I feeling so anxious? Why am I, what, what's going on? Why can't I sleep? Oh, because you have X amount of things to do on your plate, you know, and what, well, what what's going to ease your anxiety? Well, let me make a list. Let me make a list to knock things out. You know, I need to do this first. I need to do that first, you know? So I think, you know, it's just as in, you have to just make those like little adjustments to your own personal right. life to, you know, just be able to, you know, be an emotional, you know, um, an emotional capable person, you know, and, you know, it's, it's not easy, you know, it, it right. takes a lot of work, you know, it's, and it's just, it's you as a person trying to do that work. And, you know, instead of being anxious and, and you know, having the anxiety the whole day and, you know, not knowing what's going on, it's just figuring out what's going on. Why, what is it? Right. Okay. I just have too much on my plate. I need to just, I need to write things down because everything that's in here, I need to write it out so I could just see it visually, you know, and just knock right. it out, cross it out, make a list, cross it out. But yeah, that's going to, that's going to help you out the whole day. Right. Well, that was a very <clears throat> diplomatic answer. So Ernesto is a feminist. <laughs> you, passed, you passed the feminist test. That was fantastic. So it, it sounds like you're very concise, <laughs> clear, planned, organized, and your ability, your ability to assess is very impressive. But I sort of want to deep deeper into what you think your biggest success factor has been thus far. I don't want to say professional advancement, because again, I think being a teacher, being an educator is a very special career path, but I guess within your own professional reputation, I'll mm -hmm. say that, or professional decorum. Yeah, I think, you know, for myself, I've always had like, a, it's always been working hard. Okay. I've always been a hard worker. Like, uh, you know, if I always, I've always strived to kind of try to be the like, you know, and I talked about just try to be the best that I what I'm doing at that moment. Right. You know, and uh, <clears throat> I could I could I could take you back to like when I, I worked at Home Depot for about three years, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, maybe sometimes you for people that I have experience going to Home Depot, you know, sometimes you might get somebody that works there and then tell you they might work in like and they might work in the electrical department and like, hey, I need help. But you they might you might need help in plumbing with something in plumbing. They're like, well, I can't. I'm sorry, dude. I can't help you because I don't work in a department, right. you know, and I and I I've, you know, working when I was working there, I've, I've heard that a lot, you know, from my other like people that the other people that I work with, you know, so I took it upon myself to, hey, maybe that's not my department, but you know what, let's figure it out together. Well, let's find out. Hey, you know, I need to, do you know where this is at? Like, well, yeah, yeah, let's, you know what, I don't know, but let's go together. Let's go figure it out. You know, we'll, we'll, let's go find out. So I always tried myself always to kind of like be curious and always keep learning, you know, and always try, you know, if I could if I'm going to learn something new, that's going to help me and help the person I'm trying to help, like the customer I'm trying to help at that time, you know, it's, so it's not, it's going to make not only me better, but it's going to make their experience better as well. And, you know, I'll, my philosophy for myself is always striving to be the best and trying and just trying to just work hard, just keep right. working hard and have the mentality, you know, of just working hard because, you know, it's, you could, you could say, you know what, I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to slack off. But though, man, if you slack off those eight hours are going to feel long, but like, let's say if you're always like on the move, you're, you know, right. you're, those eight, eight hours are going to fly and you're, Oh damn, my shift is already cool. You know, I actually had a great day, you know, great interaction with customers, you know, and it, it was, it was all nice. Do you um, <clears throat> perhaps have a moment where you were given some of the best professional advice that you still use today? Have you ever had a mentor or if not a mentor, just a conversation that really impacted you. And I know you said it was your family just really instilling this like work ethic. But, you know, as you're working and you're meeting people and you're working with people, you have conversations. So have you ever been given advice that just really resonated with you? Yeah. And it's just, you know, just for me, it was always keep doing what you're doing. You're, you know, if you're doing a good job, keep doing it. You know, it's, you know, and it's, it's, it's just that, you know, like I've, <clears throat> I think for me, like uh, everywhere, everywhere that I've worked, I've always had like a really, a really great like uh, relationship with my managers, you know, just because, you know, I was never like, a, no, I, I I can't do that. No, like I'm like, yeah, like, give me a second. I'll, I'll help you. Right. I'll, hey, hey, Ernesto, can you help me out with this? Yeah, sure. Give me a minute. I'm helping the customer. But I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll help you out. You know, like I always had that kind of go getter attitude, you know, and uh, that's something that they always told me, hey, just keep keep doing it. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing awesome, you know, and. For me, you know, like uh, it's that's what it's been. That's what I, you know, some people have told me, hey, just keep doing what you're doing. It's it's you know, it's it shows, you know, and it'll show, you know, people will see that your people will see your worth ethic. You know, people will see that, and you know, they don't necessarily need to tell you, but you know, they'll show you that, hey, 
you know, good job. You know, hey, you're you're doing awesome, or you know, you'll get it. You know, when I was part time, they give you extra shifts, or they want to give you more hours, more shifts because they know, hey, I could count on you. You're someone that I can count on. Right. I think you know, and in having conversation and in knowing you for a few years now, it's not just your work ethic, it's the compassion and the demeanor in which you sort of share your kindness or treat others the way you want to be treated. Could you speak on how that has benefited you in the long run? Not just within, I know when I'm nice to people, oh, it's like a great day, right? And yeah. so could you kind of share or give advice to someone as why that's beneficial? Um, I honestly, I just try to be a nice person, <laughs> you know, why, nice you know, <laughs> I just, just, you know, be nice. You know, I think, yeah. you know, there's not a, you know, there's a lot of like, just bad things that happen in this world, you know, and sometimes just, it's just awesome to make someone smile or, you know, be offer that, offer that help to them, you know, or just be right. there to support them, you know, or just, Hey, like, just, just be nice. Just talk to them, you know, or say wave or say hi, you know, like I, you know, I go walk, I go for walks. I walk my dogs around the, the, my community, you know, and like, and I see my neighbors, I might not even know them, but I, you know, I say, hey, buenos dias, you know, I always say hi, I always say good morning, right. you know, like, buenos dias, you know, tengo buen día, you know, you too, you know, and like, I always try to, sp I always try to spread that positivity, you know, out there because, you know, it's, you might not know who might need that, you know, and, right. and, you know, not only it's, and I, and it just makes me feel better, you know, being my authentic self to, to anybody out there, you know, and, just bringing that positivity. No, I think that's fantastic. And, mm. you know, as you know, you might be thinking, oh, being nice in your personal life is a personal choice, but yeah. being nice within your professional setting will take you further in life because you never know if the person that you're training, if you're doing a half-assed job or you're being rude to them or you're being very short, they might be your boss one day. You really don't know, or they might be someone, a hiring manager in a company that you want to apply for. And these little moments that can go the longest, you know, just make someone say, just like you said, um, it's, it's impactful. It's impactful. And it's funny because, you know, I did share this uh, during another session where Mark, shout out to Mark. I think he's in Chicago <laughs> or something. Like I was going through a breakup and he was so nice to me that day. And I will forever, if I ever get an executive level, I'm hiring that man first because it really <laughs> impacted me. I was down. And, you know, to me, I think that also really resonated with me because I was like crying for like a week. I'm not going to lie. I'll be transparent. And yeah. every stranger that I interacted <clears throat> with, I guess you could see it in my face, right? That I was going through something. They were so kind to me. And maybe it was because I was looking distraught or because that was just their genuine personality. It impacted me so much that I said, I want to be nice to everyone I ever interact with. And to share a funny story, you know, I would talk to, I was working downtown and my colleague and I would go to lunch together all the time. And I'm very chatty. I talk a lot, mm -hmm. right? I like to make people laugh. And when we go and like go get buy our lunch or buy a coffee or buy a shake, I'm having conversations with people and I'm talking to the cashier. We're working in downtown LA. A lot of these business centric people aren't even saying hello to a lot of these customer service representatives. And here I go getting like discounts and discounts and they're giving me discounts. And, you know, I think one time, you know, I was talking to someone at Panda and I was just, you know, trying to be funny. And I was like, man, it's so hot in here. I want to work here just to lose weight. And, you know, I made the cashier <laughs> laugh and, you know, he's like, I'm going to give you a discount. And I had made a comment earlier and I was like, man, I love the fortune cookies. Yeah. This man grabs my bag, grabs a bunch of fortune cookies and throws them <laughs> in my bag. Right. <laughs> and then my colleague goes to pay and he charges her full price. <laughs> She's like, don't I get a discount? I'm with her, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But it's because you didn't take that moment to just even say hello or just smile yeah. at someone. So again, professionally, it you there is an advantage to being kind and mm -hmm. you know being compassionate. And so that's amazing to see. And even just being around you, it's day to day. And sometimes people don't realize that the person you are at work should be that same person you are in your personal life. It needs yeah. to be, you know, a simultaneous relationship between the two. So it's great to hear um, you, you know, sort of express that. And I think you touched a little bit on work life balance for yourself, you know, as adults, I think it's one of the hardest things to, one of the hardest things to accomplish is obtaining hobbies. Like, 
you as yeah. an educator, you know, you don't just check off at five o'clock, you know, or after your last class, you have to grade papers, you have to grade exams. How yeah. do you maintain a healthy work-life balance, like getting hobbies, hanging out with your friends, hanging out with your fiance? What does that look like for you? I don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, like I, uh, you know, you, when I first, when I first started teaching, you know, when I first started my, my path, you know, I did work a lot of hours, you know, and it was just me, you know, you know, there's, there's a saying, you know, when you're, when, when you're a first year teacher, you cry, <laughs> you know, and oh, you're going to cry, you know, you're yeah. going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to go through things. You're just like, if you don't cry, you know, some, something, something, you know, you're not doing something right. But you know, like uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it could get very, like, it could get very like overwhelming at certain right. points, you know, and just, you got to just find that balance, you know, and now that I've been doing this for a little, a little bit longer, you know, I've learned where to not uh, bring work home. I've learned, okay. you know, to finish, to keep work at work, you know, and sometimes, you know, there might be a few days, you know, I do have to bring that work home, but, you know, I'm, right. I make it known to, you know, my fiance, Hey, you know, like I, hey, I just need to work on this extra thing, you know, right now, but you know, it's just, I'm almost, I just, I'm almost finished. You know, and um, I, you know, I try my best to always, you know, like my weekends on my weekends and just try to, you know, maximize, you know, the most of it and just, you know, just the zone, you know, like right. now, now, now worry about work and, you know, and just focusing on what I need to do. I mean, maybe that that's going out for a walk that day, going groceries, you know, or doing doing my, my hobby, you know, what I like to do, you know, hanging out with my fiance, you know, and just you know, going out to have breakfast together, you know, going out to the mall or, you know, going out to just for just for like, you know, just to hang out and just, you know, watch a movie or something, you know. Right. So there's, you've always had, I've, I've always strived to make that keep that balance between work and, and, and home. And, um, you know, now that now that I've I've been like I said, I've been doing this for a while, like I've just I kind of learned to just keep it keep work at work. And, right. you know, and it's it's taken a, it's taken a, a lot of like time for me to you know get to where I'm at right now but you know it's it's I'm I'm I think I'm, I'm way better at it now like I I know <laughs> once I once Friday like right. today's Friday it was a lot you know I'm like 2:45 I was like I'm out I got I'm going home you're done you yeah know, I'm done <laughs> I'm done you know I was like when you all like, days bye I'm just yeah like I'm like I'm like I'm like peace Mr. Romero's <laughs> Mr. Romero's out for the week and you know he's out I'll be back on Monday right. Right. you know so it's I've I've learned to just have that balance. I've learned to have that balance. I know that's fantastic to hear. And to sort of close things off, you know, is there one piece of advice you'd like to give someone starting out in their career as a teacher or just in general that you might be, might think is fruitful for someone to hear? You know, I, I just say, don't give up, you know, just, just, it, you know, it, it's gonna, it might take you an extra year. It might take you an extra two years. It might take you an extra five years. But just don't give up, you know, yeah. just keep keep working towards that goal. You know, that's what I that's what I told myself. You know, I I I graduated from from college, you know, 2015, you know, and I and I started back on my uh, educational journey uh, in 2018. And I took like a three year hiatus, you know, but right. I always I always kept that, you know, in in the back of my mind, you know, I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to be a teacher, you know, and I just kept, you know, people ask me, well, so what you know, you, do you want to what do you want to move up, you know, here in Esto? Like, no, you know, like I. I like my time here, but, you know, I want to do this, you know? Right. So I've always had that, that, that goal in mind, you know, and just keep that goal in mind and, and just work towards that because, you know, eventually you're going to get there. If you, if you speak it into existence, you know, as, as this, you know, if you keep, keep talking about it, it's going to happen, you know, it's going to happen. You're going to work towards that. And, you know, for anybody that's out there that, you know, wants to be a teacher, you know, just, you know, I, I, I already like say, if you're going, going in with, going in with a compassionate, you know, with a open heart of you're going to help these students out, you're going to help your community. And, right. you know, it's, it's an awesome career to get into. And, you know, it's, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's hard, you know, but I, I love it. I, I don't see myself doing anything else right now at this moment, other, right. other than teaching. And, you know, for anybody else that's going out to do something else, another career, like I said, you know, just keep, keep working towards that, you know, keep working towards that. No, that's fantastic advice. And thank you so much for coming yeah. on to this platform to share your story and share your yeah. great advice. And that's it for us today. Thank you everyone for listening and we will catch you next time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me.